Hello there, my name is Bruce Rain from Rankus Creations and welcome to this live stream. Um, hello to Sad Mac, hello to Starbuck Tech, hello to Daniel Flake, Flakela, 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 Flak, something like that. Um, uh, it is uh, Sunday here, it is a nice day, not a bad day at all actually, and, and once again I'm down here in the workshop. A uh, few um, Scarlet Swordfish, Retro Techie, hello, hello. A um, few sort of little changes here and there, um, so let me know if there are any problems with video or audio or anything like that. Um, I have uh, got a new streaming Mac, so I am now using a different... Oh, bugger. So I've just realised that this camera is gone. Oh, there he is. Oh, God, I've got to do something about that. I was just I just went and looked and realised that my microscope camera had disappeared, so I am going to just do this and then do this. So yeah, um, I basically got a new computer for my live streaming up until this point. I've been using a Mac, classic Mac Pro 3.1. It's a 2008 model, I think something like that. Uh, dual, dual quad core three gigahertz. Yeah, I'm reasonably fast, but one of the real massive limitations is that it does not, uh, doesn't allow me to officially support any operating system newer than God, what was it, El, El Capitan? No, I don't know, whatever, operating system, not, not good enough for what I need. And although there are ways of getting those operating systems by doing all sorts of tweaks, I did try some of those methods and I had all sorts of reliability issues. But most importantly, the thing that really gave me the biggest problem with this Mac Pro is that it, the USB was really flaky. So I've got all these different cameras and I was constantly having to restart it and constantly having problems and all sorts of things. Hello, Jay. Audio is bad, video is bad, content is bad. Uh, host Mac is bad. It's bad all over the place, but we'll deal with it. Okay, good. Let's, uh, let's bring that up there. I'll uh, set this down about there we go. And I need to bring this across here like that. Excellent. There we go. That's good. I, I appreciate the feedback, Jay. It's always good to know these things. So, um, so anywho, um, I got um, you know I had all these uh, I had all these problems with flaky USB with all these multiple cameras, and so I just kind of got a bit fed up. So I decided that I was going to uh, upgrade it, and I did a test last time using um, my laptop, and then it went really really well. So then this time I have decided, you know, what I did is I went and bought myself a Mac Mini. 2012 Mac Mini, uh, a, an i7 2.6 gigahertz with 16 gigs of RAM and a 500 gig uh, SSD. And it is, so far, uh, going rather well. So we'll just see how, uh, how it goes. Uh, I did even clean this desk, though you would never know that to look at it. Well, you might know it to look at it if you saw it before I started. So, um, Okay, Jay, no worries, be right back, good. Uh, Caden Yang, hello. Uh, who else have we got here, have I missed anyone? Did I say hello to you, Starbuck Tech? And what about Google Clone? I can't remember, I'm not sure. But if I didn't say hello to anyone, my apologies, it's nothing personal, I do tend to miss things. And I'm still getting used to the way the comments appear in this new software that I'm using. So, um, uh, but I'm, I'm seeing them here, um, okay, so yeah, so anyhow, I'm using a Mac Mini now, uh, 2012, and of course one of the reasons I really like the 2012 is because it has USB 3, uh, and as I say, it comes in this uh, i7 configuration, and this is now actually the second fastest Mac I have in the house, so, um, so anyhow, it's all going quite well, uh, and my classic Mac Pro has now been uh, relegated to uh, being a glorified stand for my Mac Mini. So it is going to go soon. I'm going to mount the Mac Mini under the desk here, and then the, uh, the the computer will go into storage or something like that. Can't throw it away. Can't sell it. No, can't do that because otherwise we will regret it in years to come. Um, so, um, so anyhow, um, this stream is a, is a kind of a funny one. I I was I was contemplating not actually streaming at all today, uh, but then I um, you know I had. Uh, uh, I, I sort of, I, I thought, you know, look, I really should at least produce a little bit of content because uh, if you don't keep producing content, YouTube gets upset at you. So I thought, yeah, no worries. And I thought this was an interesting one because I've never done this before. And I basically had someone send me a classic and let's just go here to the, uh, 
the top view, see how well that works. Good, good, good. So this is, someone has sent me a Macintosh Classic Analog board and he, uh, it is a 110 volt version and he lives in this part of the world, which is a 240 volt part of the world. Um, so you can obviously see here the 120 volt and 240 volt, and this has got the 120 volt ticked and we need to convert this. Now, I'm gonna to have to recap it at the same time, so I'm including that as well. And to be honest, it's a fairly clickbaity sort of description for this video. And the reason is that the process of converting this from 120 to 240 is like removing one jumper. That's it. So I've never done it before. I know what is what needs to be done, but I've never actually done it. So it could actually be exciting, who knows? I mean, I might do it wrong and blow things up. Um, we can always, we can only hope, can't we? Um, I hate these little things. I need to buy a whole stack of these. You know, these little black plug thingies that hold these covers on because they get lost all the time. Uh, and people send them to me with only a couple of them on there, so a few missing, and I need to, I like to be able to send them back with them all back on there. So I need to buy some of these, find them somewhere. Um, I'm just going to pop them all out. Yeah, so I can take the cover off so that we can have a look at this board from the other side because it's really important with the Classic to look at the board from the other side. You can often see the state of the capacitors by doing that. So uh, mount the Mac Mini inside the Mac Pro. <laughs> well, the thing is, Mac, the Mac Pro takes up quite a bit of floor space, so I'll actually be happy to get that floor space back, you know, sort of for putting my legs or whatever. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, I'll be happy to, uh, to do that. Um, yeah, but anyhow, I mean, look, the Mini is... A wonderfully convenient little computer. I mean, it is just so small. Uh, I've, I've I've got a 500 gig SSD in there, but I've got another SSD in the Mac Pro, which I'll probably take out and put in the second drive bay because those little minis can have two hard drives in them, um, which uh, which suits me fine. Right, so there's my cover off. Let's have a look how things look. Now, the area that we're always going to be looking for here, Lazy Jones. Hello. Uh, can't 3D print the plugs. You know what? Uh, they're a bit small. I think I'd probably struggle with my 3D printer getting these working properly. I could probably make something similar, so something that just pushed in without this little, this little, because there's kind of like a mechanism. There's, these are in two parts. You've got the bottom part and the top part. And I think I'd struggle getting the detail from my 3D printer for those. So, uh, anywho, um, uh, 2018. I'll tell you an interesting thing happened. I um, uh, this is a while ago. I wanted a, a Mac Mini, um, and I wanted a 2012. I think I may have I may have even told the story before, so I apologise. But I wanted a 2012. One came up on eBay, 2012 model that had a problem. Picked it up for really cheap because the, he'd this guy had done something and he'd torn something off the board, and obviously I knew I could repair it. So I bought it and I got it really cheap, and I was like, yeah, that's great. So anyhow, I get it back. That's a bloody 2014. And I don't know if you're aware, but there was a 2014 model, which has, what is it? Is it four gigs of RAM and no upgradability or something like that? Something stupid. Um, no RAM upgradability. And, and, and I, my heart sank, you know. I was, I, here I was thinking I was getting this, you know, 2012 model and I got this crappy 2014 model. But anyhow, I paid very little for it. So, and I did get it working and it's now working as a web server. So it's fine. It runs well. Um... Geez, I'm freezing. Um, I mean, you know, Australian freezing. Um, okay, so the area that we generally will look out for uh, for any leakage is around this area here. And this really isn't too bad at all because we have, often what happens is the capacitors leak on the other side and then goop comes through, you know, comes through and then you see it all there. This one really doesn't look too bad. Now, I think, although I don't know, I think the US model has slightly different capacitors on it to the um, to the Australian one, or the to the you know the 120 volt has slightly different to the 240 volt, slightly different capacitors in this region here. So I'm going to just have a look here. Uh, I figured that rather than do a new guide, I can probably do, I'll just modify this one if I need to. So this is, and of course, it may mean that I don't have the caps. This is a 470 microfarad 50 volt. That's correct. So I'm going to I'm just going to check these against my guide. This here is my, one of my guides, which you'll find on the Recap Mac website. I should have an overlay for that, but I don't. Uh, Adam McGee, hello, how are you? Um, and uh, looking, 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 yep, okay, so I'm just checking to make sure that I'm not missing anything. I expect this to be a fairly, uh, 
not not as, as populated live stream as usual. I expect there's probably a lot of people from the US getting uh, getting all geared up for their day off tomorrow um, for uh, the 4th of July. Happy 4th for everyone, for all the Americans for tomorrow. Uh, 2216, 2216. What's this one? What's this one? That's 2210. That's right. Uh, what do we got here? 1,016. Yep. 2,210. Yep. Uh, 1,010. Yep. So, so far, everything's the same. So, it must just be 470.25. Okay. So... If this was a uh, an Australian one, as opposed to, or you know, an international one, a 240 volt one, one of the big differences you see is rather than these two little caps here, there's just one great big cap there, and then just a bridge running across this one. Um, so that's just one of the things you see. But right in here, there's a little thing called JP1. It's very hard for me to show you here. I can probably show you with the microscope a little bit later. JP1, and it says 110 volt only. And that's all I need to do to change the voltage. I need to remove that. So let's just have a quick little look-see here with the uh, microscope. How about I spin it around so it's around the right way? That'll be nice. That'll be nice. Uh, where is it? There it is. There we go. Then we go here to... I'm going to just change my view if I can find it. There we go. 510 volt only. Simple as that. Michael's Workshop, hello. Uh, off tomorrow and Monday, yeah. Already explosions all around. Yeah, I've um, yeah, I was talking to Dana from Dana Does Stuff, who I hope is sleeping at the moment. He's been staying up ridiculous hours, um, and uh, yeah, so uh, uh, and he was saying that there were crackers going off all the time around his place. So, um, just checking out a little chat here. Ah, uh, where are we? Light of force be with you. <laughs> doesn't quite work as well, does it? Because it doesn't really work that well out here either, because we, we don't say May the 4th, we say 4th of May. Um, right, so, all right, okay, so that's that's that. We've, we've standard that enough. Um, time to get some of these caps off. We'll start the actual recapping process, and we will, of course, also take that little jumper off. Um, where's he go? He's there to there, there to there, 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 there. Now I've got my um machine today. I'm just going to take that off because it's gone to sleep. Wakey, wake up! Right, ow, ow, ow! Hurt myself on something. Here we go. Now she's starting to warm up. <clears throat> okay. Well, that's the wrong view. That's the wrong view. Microscope. What's happened? Top view. All right. I didn't click in the right place. I'm still getting used to this software. Trader, hello, thank you for joining. Yeah, so I'm using different uh, different streaming software. This is the second time I've used this software. It's called uh, Ecam Live. There are a lot of things I like about it. There are a couple of things I don't like about it. One of the most annoying things about it is, um, is if I do this and I add this uh, comment here from Retro Techie and then I change views, comment's gone. And then when I come back to that view, ah, comment's back again. Um, there is the option to actually put a comment into all scenes, so now it's everywhere I go. But that has, that's a manual process, it's a two-step process, and I'm a little bit frustrated by that. I've, I've already said to them, hey, fix it. You guys, fix it. And they have very politely come back and said, oh, that's a great feature request, we'll consider that. Which, of course, probably means it'll never get done, but anyhow. <sighs> I'm cold. Frederick Raymer, hello, thank you for joining. Um, okay, so just to recap for the people that are just rocking up now, um, this is a Macintosh Classic Analog Board. This is one that was made for use in the 120 volt part of the world, and the owner of this would like me to change it so that it's uh, able to be used in this 240 volt part of the world. Uh, that in itself is actually a very, very easy process, but I am going to have to recap it at the same time because these things need to be recapped because they just do. They've got 
these are some of these computers that came out at a time when there were lots of kind of bad caps floating around. But, you know, uh, it could just be age. It may not actually be that these caps were bad, part of that capacitor plague that happened. These, these it could just be because they're old. So anyhow, we'll have a look at some of them when we whip them off. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the jumper, which is the one that is turning this into a 120 volt machine. Okay, that's pretty much it. That was difficult, wasn't it? Let's whip him out. And there we go, he's out. He's now a 240 volt machine. Wasn't that difficult. Um, I should probably plug it in and test it, but I'm not gonna. I'll test it after I've recapped it so that if there's anything wrong with it, I'll have invested all of that time. Ow, sorry, I just spiked myself with the, uh, uh, the, um, the pins on this thing. All right, let's whip some caps off. Uh, I better check this. Tridale, hello there. Um, dun, dun. Hello, Joe Williams. Thank you for joining. Uh, so once again, I am uh, I am using different streaming software and I am using a different computer now for my live streaming. So it's all an exciting time, exciting time. I can, I'm sure you can just feel the excitement. It's uh, a huge. Right, so let's start getting some of these caps off. Now I'm going to be, this is boards in pretty good condition. So I've got absolutely no issue with using my, um, my um machine, my solder sucker. Nice and easy. Uh, it's nice and quick and easy to get these off with one of these. Uh, obviously, if you do not have one of these, you can use um, you can use a, a, a manual solder sucker, one that you prime and then press a button to to um, to release it to you know sort of release the compressed air and suck the solder out, which I uh, have used many times. And there are times when I do actually prefer to use that. Number one, because I don't have to switch it on and wait for it to heat up. Uh, oh. Don't you fall off, you. We want to look at you afterwards, so stay. Um, and of course, the other way you can remove, remove solder is with solder wick, uh, which I do quite regularly. And if this was one where there was a fair bit of damage, visible damage, I would be much more likely to use wick with this because it's a, it's a lot more gentle when you know how to use it or when you've practiced. Um, but, uh, I'm just guessing where the caps are now. I'm not even bothering to look. I have done a few of these before, so I suspect my guesses will probably be right. But who knows, I could be whipping off an inductor or something else. He's off. He's off. He's off. And he's off. Up they come. There you go. Right, so that's that little cluster. And you know what? This actually looks incredibly good. I need to look at the chat because I haven't looked at it in a while. And people could be screaming out to me going, hey. Nope, no one's screaming out to me. That's good. So off come all those caps. We've now got this little space here. And this is one of the cleanest classic boards I've ever seen. I can see maybe a tiny bit of residual leakage, but... Sometimes I end up having to clean these. Um, you know, I have to end, I end up having to pop them in the ultrasonic cleaner. I have done that in one of my live streams before. Um, uh, did I say hello to you, Tridale? I feel like I did, but if I didn't, there we go. Uh, I want to say thank you for all your tips and advice. That gets a spot. That gets a spot, that does. Thank yous get a spot. Uh, I sort of recently finished a recap of a Sega CD and watching your video streams helped uh, make the process so much easier. Well, you are most welcome. Thank you very much for, uh, for your thank you. I do appreciate that. Um, so, uh, so yeah, one of the times with, with well, several with, with, with these, I've, I've been in a situation where the leakage has been so bad, there's just been funk all over the board. And what I end up having to do is these are riveted in these, um, I'm just going to move this out of the way. These, this speaker is actually riveted in using little aluminium pop rivets. And I have to drill them out, desolder the speaker, take the speaker off, um, then drop this into the ultrasonic cleaner, give it a good clean, give it a really good dry so that there's no liquid left anywhere. And then, uh, and then that, that does often sort a lot of problems out. Um, 
making sure that these are really clean after they have had capacitor leakage is just super important. Um, I'm just going to measure the resistance across this speaker to make sure that it is okay, because these speakers do tend to die. So I'm just going to check that there. Oopsie. Yep, we're good. Um, this is one of the dumbest speaker sizes out there. This is a 63 ohm, 0.25 watt, 63 ohm. You go and try and find a 63 ohm replacement speaker these days, it's absolutely impossible. And as I have mentioned on this show before, the best I've been able to find is a 50 ohm, which I use, and then of course you can just pop a little resistor in there if you want to get the, uh, if you want to get the resistance the same. Um, and it's a little bit smaller than this, so it has to kind of be stuck in with a bit of hot glue or something. It doesn't have these little mounts. I probably should make a 3D printed mount thing. Shouldn't I? Shouldn't I? Shouldn't I? Um, have you tried using Chip Quick to remove, S remove SMD components? Uh, no. Um, I remove surface mount components with uh, hot air station, so that's what I basically do. Uh, uh, Sydney, Sydney, Australia here as well. Um, right, um, which part of Sydney are you in, Jay? Okay. Do, do, do. I suppose that board handles 50 to 60 uh, hertz without further modification. Let's hope. Um, Okay, I'm going to remove some of these other caps as well because I do have them here to replace and, you know, they're, they're some of them are problems. So I'll probably, I'll probably whip off this guy and this guy and this guy and this guy and this guy. So let's do them. Oh, I've got to put my goggles back on again. So my eyes are terrible. They didn't used to be. God, my eyes used to be good. And then uh, I turned 40. And when I turned 40... Everything went. Everything stopped working. Oh, except for my hearing. My hearing's still pretty good. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just uh, it's just not one of the the really good things about getting old. No one warned me either. I thought someone might have told me, but no one told me. They didn't say, "Oh, by the way, when you turn forty, or soon after." your eyesight's just going to go, and it'll go really, really fast. I mean, you'll just wake up one day and realise you can't see as close anymore. So, <laughs> what? So I started warning other people, but for some reason people didn't want to hear it. This one's stuck on with a little bit of snot. Eh, come off. There we go. And here we go. So do this one and this one. We've got one here. There's a lot of caps on these. I don't replace all of them. I mean, if someone asked me to, I would. If someone said, hey, can you please replace every single cap on this board? I would. But it would cost a bit. Um, do I do that one as well? I can't remember. I think I do this one as well. I'll take it off. If I haven't got another one, I'll put it back on again. If I knew you were coming, I'd have baked the cake. What did I do? Yeah. Didn't melt it. There we go. All right, now I could go and measure all these and see if any of them have gone out of spec or something like that, but I don't know if I can be bothered. Let's just see if I can see any leakage. Yeah, no, no one did, no one thought we would be using these. Why would you rivet a speaker? Just asking. Okay, so Tridale, that's actually not a bad question. One of the things you have to remember about the Macintosh Classic is it was sold as a real budget computer. It was designed to be sold to schools, it was designed to be sold uh, in homes, uh, it was, the Mac was essentially an expensive computer for a lot of people outside of their budgets. This was one of the ways that Apple were trying to get into homes and schools. They were trying to get their 
product into as many places as possible. So they created the Macintosh Classic. Now, even at the time this came out, this was a fairly underpowered computer. Um, and they took, they made a lot of shortcuts. They took a lot of steps to make manufacturing cheaper so that they could bring this to market really, really cheap. And you can see something like this here, even just the way this is done is quite clever. So this was all made as a single board uh, like this. Um, and that was all manufactured as a single board like that. And then they would just snap this off and that then becomes the, the board for the back of the CRT. So, you know, lots and lots of shortcuts. I mean, even the fact that they didn't, they didn't bother making this a, like a switching power supply, one that can actually just take both voltages without this modification that I'm doing. See, something like the Macintosh SE that came out before this Mac, that had a power supply in it that could just automatically adapt to the voltage. You could go from 110 to 240. You didn't need to make any modifications to it. Then they made the classic, they went backwards. So this was about making a budget computer. And so a lot of things that you see in this are all about manufacturing it for cheap. Oh, bugger. Oh no, it's all right. I thought this was a version of board that I wouldn't be able to test, but it's not, it's the good one. It's all good, everyone, fi it's fine. You can all, everyone can relax now. Good, good, good. Sunday, hello there. Um, do, do, ribbiting. Oh, Michael likes his puns, doesn't he? All right, so uh, stay. All right, I'm just going to have a little look at some of these caps to see if any of them look like they're leaking. And if they do, I'm going to put them under the microscope to show you. But thus far, so whatever is going, this this must have been stored in such a way because there is just no leakage on these at all. Now, there, a lot of these may well be out of spec and stuff like that, but. This is by far the best looking classic analog board I have ever seen. Now admittedly people don't usually send me nice ones, they usually send me absolute crud, because that's what I do, but you know. Uh, oh, oh dear. Oh wow, I've got some blobs on the screen here that make it hard to read this stuff. Uh, auto fiddler, oot, 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 oot. I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your surname. I'll just call you Fiddler. A uh, high school teacher kept about three of them in his room and said he would never give them up because he liked them for doorstops. You could hold a big door open one of these. There's some weight behind them. Um, yeah, okay. So, uh, and of course, we all know that the classic, another one they have a big problem with is the battery bombing. But you know what? I've got a stack of battery bombed boards. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do something rather awesome. I assume are people here in the chat familiar with... Kai Robinson's work and one of the things that he did was he remade the Macintosh SE logic board. Uh, what he has also done is he has redone the classic logic board. So you may have never seen one of these before but here is a Macintosh classic logic board with absolutely nothing on it, not a single component. Now what is the, so the battery lives down here and so most of the time when they get damaged they get it to this area here. Now, what you've got there is the uh, the actual CPU, the 68K CPU, and what you have there is the real-time clock chip. Now, what's nice is both of these components you can still buy. You can buy these today. So, these are the ones in the firing line. These are the ones that get damaged. Most of these other components are usually okay when a classic battery blows up. So, I've got a bunch of battery bond boards, and what I intend to do is lift the components off that and put them on here and make myself a new, brand new classic logic board. Um, there's uh, the back there with all the little surface mount uh, resistors and capacitors and stuff like that. So that's going to be a fun job. But to be honest, I love surface mount soldering, so I think that will actually be a fun job. So I'm going to be getting out the hot air station. I'm going to be transferring all of those components from the battery bomb board that I have onto this. And in theory, going to be making a Macintosh Classic. The one thing I don't have at the moment in spare is a ROM. Uh, I've used the ROMs. The ROM, I've had ones where the ROM's been cooked. Um, the ROM gets cooked with these quite regularly because the ROM can live in two positions on the socket. It can live, you know, like, because the socket is actually one pin wider than the, 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 the ROM. And if you put the ROM in the wrong place, you can cook it. And I've had several where the, the ROM has been cooked. Uh, and so I don't have any spare ROMs. They've all been used for those ones that have been cooked. 
Ah, ouah, 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 ouah. Uh. Okay, just check key one check. Can't you burn a ROM? You can, absolutely can. And I will get myself one of those little ROM burners one day and I will do it. I mean, Steve from Mac 84 has done it. Uh, shout out to Steve, wherever he might be. Uh, he has done it um, and I intend to do it as well. So I just need to go out and get myself one of those little ROM burners and I, because I, I want to be able to duplicate several ROMs. For example, I have a Macintosh. Oh, actually, no, you can't do it, can you? I was thinking of that, but not without that other chip. I was thinking of doing a doing the um uh selling uh, rom upgrades for the mac 2 but i just remember there's another chip there that i'm not sure if you can get hold of readily but anyhow let's 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 not get sidetracked so let's stick some caps in this shall we let's pop a cap in his ass um right so we are going to need um capacitors of all different sizes all the sizes all the sizes what have we got here here's 25 volt we're gonna have a few we're going to have a 1,025. Let's grab one of those. Jeez, I'm running low on those. Um, we are going to have a 470.25, or is it more than one? Three 470.25s. On. Toss. Let me just check that. I want to make sure that's a Nichicon, that's a good brand, and that is 105. Yep, got to make sure I've got to make sure I'm putting quality into these things. What's this one? This is a oh, that's a very different shape. Okay, 47025. What else have we got? Uh, that's it, I think, for the 25s that I'm replacing. 25, 25. Okay, 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 yep, that's it for the 25s I'm replacing. Yep, yep, yep. Everyone good. Okay, then let's move on to the 10 volts. Oh, actually, I'll move on to whatever this is. Yes, 10 volts. 10 volt is what I have in my hand, so that's what I'm going to look at. 10 volt. Ooh, nasty. Oh, Dave, hello. Thank you for joining. Um, doo -doo -doo. <laughs> I guess it's time to end the stream. So if anyone's not sure of the inside joke there, uh, in the on the Mac Yak show, the weekly Mac Yak show uh, that I'm part of, um, Dave, I think, finishes work or something like that at a particular time, and then he gets home and joins in the stream chat just as we're about to finish. So we always know it's time to end the show when Dave turns up. Um, okay, so this is, uh, I did say 20, 10 volt. Okay, this is 10 volt. I need a 1,000, 10 volt. That's a good looking one, that one. Good quality cap, that. Low ESR, Panasonic, expensive. No expense spared for this. What's that? 2,210, 2,200, 2,210. Also, good quality Panasonic caps there. Um... Did I replace that one too? I think I did. Let me have a look. No, that's safe. That's all good. Uh, right. <laughs> we'll allow the stream to continue. That's kind of you. Okay, now I'm going to have to bend over and make... Oh, really bad.
Sorry. Sorry about that, folks. Um, not sure what happened there. Just having a look here. Still got plenty of battery. I must have accidentally pressed the off button. It's the off button's on the bottom of the little cordless thing, so I must have pressed the off button. Oh, is that? We'll see. If it dies off again, see, see, here's the thing. Um, I uh, I used to keep a backup microphone on here in case the wireless uh, died on me, uh, and then. But when I got this new wireless thing, the sound was just slightly out of sync, creating an echo. So I looked, I don't need the backup anymore. This new one is so reliable. <laughs> so much for that idea. Anyhow. Okay, sorry about that, folks. Um, that was, yeah. Um, I, I wasn't saying anything interesting during that time, so don't worry about that at all. I was just hunting down capacitors. Um, and uh, yeah, so I need to keep a better eye on my audio levels here. So that's look, I'm looking at them. I see them. They're here. So, all right. Let's continue with this recapping. Um, I'm going to... Did I put the 50 volt? Did I get the 50 volt? The 470 50? I'm not even sure if I did. 470 50. 147, 147 50. Um... Um, um, I just feel like I didn't get it. I don't think I did. Because I'm a dumbass. Okay. Yeah, it's a good looking cap, handsome cap, alright, I get to actually use the soldering on it at last, <laughs> cursing the capacitor varies, yeah, okay, let's pop this over here, there we go, there's a first cap going in, and that's a 470 microfarad, 50 volt. Uh, when I put these in, I just bend these slightly. I don't like I don't like to bend the pins too much. I actually get very frustrated when I have pin, bent pins if I'm removing components. So I don't want to do it to other people. Um, but uh, what I do is I will generally solder one side like this. Get that all looking nice. Then oh, I will push from the other side gently melt that join I just made and get that flush like that and then solder the other side and then it's nice and flush on the board then okay so there is our first cap and we just got to do that a million other times where are my snippers here are my snippers snippity snip snippity snip Checking the chat. Are those polymer caps? No, these are not. These are just uh, your normal aluminium electrolytic, but they are long life caps, and they are uh, they are a good quality Panasonic low ESR. So uh, they're good ones. Twenty two hundred sixteen. We've only got one of those. Good. So that's the one that lives just here. And positive on the top. Positive is actually marked out on the silk, uh, silk, uh, silk screening, screen printing, whatever it's called, um, on these. So, uh, here we go, let's... That one's pretty flush already. Magic. Magic. Uh. Mm -hmm -hmm. This is the dull part. I am hoping to test this today, so just uh, letting you know. That could be exciting, because if I haven't done the conversion from 110 to 240 volts properly, whew, we could be having fun. 
Uh, these are all positive at the top, I think. Oh, no, they're not. Okay. Uh, we've got a couple of 2210s. Where are they? Twenty-two hundred ten. Twenty-two hundred ten. There we are. Popsy, don't you leave. Twenty-two hundred ten. Twenty-two hundred ten. I always just like to check, check once, twice, three times. Very important. Okay, and then we've got positive on the bottom there, and then on that one, positive on the bottom there as well. Okay. I could just put all the caps in at once and then just solder them, but I, I don't know, I, I, I tend to work this way, I don't know why, I just, maybe so that I don't get them mixed up, or, I don't know, maybe I'm an idiot, it's always possible. My um machine, the one that, the solder sucker, it makes noises constantly, it goes, Boop. 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 What is the name of the wireless microphone you're using? Okay, it is a Rode Wireless Go 2. Um, I went with the, the 2. So essentially there's a thing called the Rode Wireless Go. And it allows you to... It has a, a transmitter and a receiver. Um, the Wireless Go 2 allows you to have two transmitters and one receiver. And I just thought to myself, you know what? I can just see myself one day wanting to mic up a second person. So I want to get the two. Uh, so I did. Um, and I have already used it with two microphones. So that's, that's kind of cool. Um, the receiver is the same size as the transmitter, which is like this. I can't show it to you at the moment because it's over there, it's plugged in. So it's, the receiver is about that size. Uh, and it has a little uh, coloured LCD screen on it showing you your levels and your battery levels of your transmitters, excuse me, battery level of the receiver, but of course the receiver's plugged in so the battery levels aren't really an issue. Then the important thing about this is it does actually have a microphone built in right there. So you can't actually use these as the microphone itself. Uh, and, and you see some people doing live streams with the thing pinned on their shirt like that. But I actually have these lavalier mics that you can't see here. I have these lavalier mics um, uh, and that you, you know, just plug in and um, wear on your shirt here. You can barely see it because I'm wearing a black shirt. Uh, are we still doing the voltage conversion? Is that done? Well, see, this was the thing I said right at the beginning. That was kind of clickbait because the voltage conversion involves removing this piece of wire which has already been removed, sorry. I mean, I tried to drag it out as long as I could, but at the end of the day, the conversion itself is actually incredibly simple. So, uh, um, so anyhow, I really like this microphone. It is Rode. Rode make very good quality stuff. They're, it's actually an Australian company, believe it or not. And Rode, the Rode, main Rode um, uh, kind of head office is actually only a few suburbs away from me. And the irony being that I actually ended up buying this from uh, the, the United States. And that's because I had an Amazon gift card, and so I used Amazon gift card to buy it on Amazon. So that's that story. I'm glad we got that sorted. Oh, by the way, just in case, just in case, looking at the 32 people listening, if you have forgotten, please don't forget to smash that like button. Um, so, um, all right, so we're working our way through. We're getting our caps on here. Um, we are now looking at... What have I got? A 1000 microfarad 16. That's a 1000 microfarad 16. I went straight to the right one, first up. How often does that happen? Like never. Okay, plus at the top, minus at the bottom. There we go. These ones I've had to specifically go out and buy thin ones because some of them come in a sort of a, a thin configuration, a tall thin, and some of them are short and fat. And because these caps are all clustered together, they, I have to go with uh, uh, ones that are tall and thin, so they don't all run into each other. <laughs> Everyone go and check out... Uh, Sean from Action Retro's uh, latest video, where he was 
testing out a, uh, a SATA, a, P a PCI SATA card in his uh, uh, G4 mirror drive door. I got a wee mention in that video. So he was testing it out watching one of my live streams. <clears throat> oh, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Thank you very much, Ron. <clears throat> What's the donation level to have it converted to 480 volts? I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do that. And there is only one reason why I'm not going to do that. And that is because this is for a customer and he specifically asked me to make it 240 volts. So I, 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 need, to, I need to do what the customer says. The customer is always right. Um, 1,010. Why do I feel like there are... Why do I feel like there's more than one of those? Oh, there's two 1,016s. Oh, there's another one up here. Okay. Uh, 1,016. Let's do that one, shall we? Let's shall. Let's shall. That one goes up here. Yep. So this was clearly made in Singapore. Oh, crap. Dropping capacitors. Okie dokie 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 dokie. Now this uh, cap must get some vibrations or something because this is one where they they normally stick it onto the board with a bit of snot. You know, that plastic snot that they used sometimes on caps. So uh, I can always put some on afterwards. I have some uh, Celastic I can use. All right. Okay, so that's that. We then want our uh, Shady Robot. Hello, thank you for joining. <laughs> um, and let's have a look here. Uh, we're looking at... That one there is a 1010. So let's do that one, shall we? 1010. 1000 microfarad 10 volts. And let's put it around the right way. Because otherwise, you're going to feel like a dumbass. There we go. Cool. Um, I blew up a capacitor on one of my live streams recently. Um, for fun. I actually, it was a controlled experiment. Um, and it was a capacitor that I didn't like. And I just basically rigged it up. Reverse polarity with way too much voltage. And uh, it slowly swelled. And then popped. Let out a whole bunch of gas. It was... Not particularly exciting, but it did what I wanted. I wanted it to blow up. It did blow up, so you know, worked out well. Sunny, hello. How are you? Thank you for joining. Uh, you're welcome for the video adapter. So just uh, that was. Uh, um, I did a recap. I think if it was an SE30 or something like that. I can't remember. I did a recap for Sunny relatively recently. And I had uh, a little adapter, um, you know, one of these little uh, VGA to, um, you know, whatever the Apple thing is called, something 15, um, DB15. I had an adapter uh, that I had, I had bought, but it wasn't the right sort of adapter for uh, one of the sync on green computers like the Macintosh LC, Macintosh 2SI, Macintosh 2CI. They have the sync on green, and if you don't have the right adapter, you uh, you won't get a picture out of them. Um, and I had bought this adapter and realised that it didn't, it wasn't the right adapter. It didn't actually allow me to do sync on green. It did all of the later Macs, but it didn't do those early ones. So I hardwired it to work with the two CI, and um, and and then I didn't actually end up needing it because I had plenty of other adapters floating around. So when Sonny said he was having trouble getting a picture from his 2CI, I said, well, you can have this adapter, send it over. So um, that's the, uh, that was the, that was it. It was like, okay, 
I bought a SCSI 2SD. There we go. So there's just a reminder to everyone that I do sell SCSI 2SDs if you are in Australia. Um, I also sell blue SCSIs. Um, we don't discriminate here. We have all the SCSIs. Uh, I don't have all of them, actually. I don't sell the RAR SCSI, and I don't sell the... Um, what's that other one called? There's one more. I can't remember what it's called, though. 47025. Actually, I really enjoy making SCSI to SDs. I make them here. I get the PCBs printed, and then I go in and solder them. And I have to say, I love making them. There's such a sense of satisfaction when you get to the end of them, and, you know, you install some software and put them in your, your old Mac. Love it. Anyone have any recommendations for ultrasonic cleaner fluid? That is a very good question, and I am going to answer that. So, it really depends who you speak to about ultrasonic um, uh, ultrasonic cleaner fluid. Some people have actually just said, look, you know what? You can use just about any detergent in there that you want. Uh, I have always been a little bit cautious of that because I just worry about whether any of those cleaners might leave some sort of residue behind that might cause some sort of corrosion or something along those lines um oh the link in the stream description is out of stock oh my goodness gracious so what i probably put in there was a link to branson ec that's probably what i put in there branson ec so you can actually probably just do a search for branson ec uh there's another one that i've tried i really did not like what was that called i've got it still floating around here somewhere really didn't like it it was just awful um, so, um, so I'm just checking, checking, checking. Are you converting? Sorry, just go, going back here. Are you converting from European voltage to North America? I missed the beginning. Other way around. I'm converting from, uh, from the US voltage to, uh, European or Australian voltage. Um, so, um, yeah. So anyhow, um, and it's already done by the way. Uh, I know it's a bit clickbaity, but it literally takes about 20 seconds to do the conversion. So I did that quite early on. Now I'm just recapping it. Um, so I'm uh, trying to think of putting a motherboard through the dishwasher to see how it worked. I know it's probably frowned upon here, but I will say it worked a treat. Well, it's interesting you say that, Sonny. Um, I, I'm, I'm not going to. I'm not going to say to anyone. So the, the 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 two things that are wrong with using a dishwasher. Number one. Don't use dishwashing detergent. That stuff is really, really harsh. So you're obviously just going to use the heat and the cleaning process of, of the dishwasher. The other problem is that dishwashers use tap water and tap water has quite a lot of impurities in it. So you need to make sure that once it comes out of the cleaner, give it a really good rinse with some distilled water or demineralized water um, or, uh, or isopropyl alcohol, something where you can get that tap water off it and then let it dry. Okay, so that's, but there are a lot of people that swear by using the dishwasher. So I am not, I'm not going to criticize it. I mean, there are enough people that um, say, yep, 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 do it. That I really can't, I can't argue. I don't do it. I don't need to do it. I've got an ultrasonic cleaner here that's big enough to put whatever board I want in it. But um, if you don't have that, I can kind of understand because the dishwasher does do a pretty thorough job. Which way around does this go? Plus on the top. Uh, so, you know, I mean, I'm not, um, I'm not really going to only criticise. Some people I know very well actually use the dishwasher for cleaning their boards. So, you know. Um, and, um, but yeah, ultrasonic cleaning liquid. I actually use a specific cleaning liquid out here that I really like. Uh, but unfortunately, it's made by an Australian company and sold here in Australia. And I imagine trying to get it shipped overseas would be a nightmare because of the cost and the weight and all that sort of stuff and the fact that it's chemicals. You probably have a hell of a time. Now, I tried to actually get some Branson EC brought out here to test it. The cost is ridiculous. So I've just never even bothered. Uh, but Branson EC is the one that a lot of people uh, recommend. Ambacil, that was the other one I tried and I hated it. It just left all of the... Uh, all of the, the shiny solar bits, it left them all uh, dull and yuck. And so, no, never going to use Ambersil again. Ever, 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 ever. 
Um, my dishwasher wrecked several boards, so I made uh, sleep on the couch for a few. Ah, oh, jeez. It's enough out of you, Michael. This board does not look waterproof. It looks like particle board on the top. Oh, interesting. Uh, not being able to see it, I can't really make any judgment. So this is 220 microfarad, 50 volt, and it is a Rubicon, good, another good brand. So what, 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 what size? What, what, what? 220 microfarad, 50 volt. Where's that? There it is. It's up here somewhere. It's up here near the flyback. There's the positive, there's the negative. Interesting thing, of course, this is going to be a problem more and more as time goes on, and that is it's going to be an issue with flybacks. Uh, as, I mean, you know, no one makes flybacks anymore. I mean, there are some, I think, still floating around, but the problem you have is that no one is making cathode ray tubes anymore. So they're not a part that is still getting manufactured. And of course, when flybacks go, if you need to buy a new one, you probably end up having to just get one off another computer. And of course, things like the uh, G3, G3 IMAX, they uh, have, uh, have flyback problems. So that's always an interesting challenge. Um, I've got a little bit of a crack solder joint here I'm gonna clean up. It's just on the, it's not an important one, but I will give this a little look over for uh, crack solder joints, because that's <clears throat> part of doing a good job. Right, what else are we missing? We're missing this one here. That's a 1000 microfarad 25. Is that this one? That's this one. Isn't that good? And that goes there. Sorry about my bald head. Getting into the picture here, but I, I don't really see any other way around it. I'm maybe mounting the camera further that way and then putting it this way, maybe. But at least there's a, there's a bit of a view here of what I'm doing. Classical classic too. Who knows? Mm. And he probably did tell me. I can take off this sticker now. You put a sticker on it to not plug it in. But I can take it off now because it has been converted. Now, when I actually go to test this, if all of a sudden the picture goes, that's because I've blown a fuse because I've done something wrong. So I'm just warning everyone with plenty of plenty of plenty of time, plenty of advance warning. But if you're watching the live stream and it just suddenly goes black, just sit tight, I'll go and reset the fuse box and come back and switch it back on again. Uh, I'm, oops, what did I just drop? Okay, so I'm, I still need, I think it's only one cap. I think I've got everything in here except for one. We will give it another look and it is a 4.7 microfarad 250 volt. Now I'm sure I grabbed one of them, which means it suggests to me that it's either fallen off the desk Or, well, there's really, uh, falling off the desk is really the, the, the main, the main one, isn't it? Well, it, I mean, it, yeah, I know there's capacitor theories. I know they're always here. Ever-present threat in this place. Capacitor theories that come in and steal capacitors when my back is turned. Um, oh, well. it'll turn up. It'll turn up. Was it again two, 200 and, 250 volt? Well, the easiest way to know. Well, oh no, I hadn't got the container out. So if I haven't got the container out, then I didn't grab it, did I? Okie dokie. Uh, <laughs> well, thank you very much for saying so, but I, uh, I don't, I don't win them all, I can tell you that. Um, one of the things I actually have to do today when I finish this live stream, I've actually got to spend a bit of time working on all these Macs that I've had problems with. 
uh, the amount of recapping that I've been having to do lately has been so great that when I get a computer that comes along and I recap it and it doesn't work after recapping because it's got something else wrong with it, I virtually just have to put them to one side and keep moving because if I get bogged down on one single repair for too long, uh, the work just piles up and up and up and up and up. Um, I've got a box up in the uh, up in the house full of recapping jobs and I haven't even opened it. Um, which is just terrible. All right, let's just go in and check and make sure that all the all the caps are here. That's looking good. That's looking good. The sorts of things that I always check for when I'm doing this, I check to make sure that I've got the polarity correct. So I always do a little double check with that. Check to make sure that all the caps are here that are meant to be here. And that one's there. That's good. And that's the positive up there. That's there. That's the positive down there. Because I have in the past put capacitors on the wrong way by accident and it's always good to do that final check to make sure that they're all around the right way and avoid any embarrassment of something going Poof! you don't want that all right so that's all the big leaky caps done ones that are prone to leaky so now we're just going to go in and we're going to fix up some of these uh, cracked solder joints we'll have a little look to see if we can find any um, Right. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna have to lift this up. There we go. Up we go. And let's have a look. And we'll go to microscope. So when I was referring to the cracked solder joint before, I was referring to this guy here. Now this one is not actually used for conducting any tricity. This is just like a groundy type thing, but it's 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 used to hold this um uh, the kind of the, the piece of metal that uh, holds all of the, um, you know, the, the adjusters and the power switch and all that holds that in place. And as you can see, it's really, really common for this to happen. So I'm going to solder this. And when I do this, I'm going to grab my big tip, my big tip, my big um, one that has a large amount of surface area because I want to get a lot of heat onto this. One last question for ultrasonic cleaners. I love answering ultrasonic cleaner questions. So here we go. You have my, almost have my full and undivided attention. The reason why I say almost is because I'm doing stuff at the same time. Right, let's have a look at that. Yep, okay. Uh, do they do anything at cleaning corrosion? I have an old game console that was uh, stored poorly and can see corrosion on metal components through the vents. Yes and no. Um, some, some types of corrosion come off quite easily, others don't, and you might have to resort to things like vinegar and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that's... Um, <clears throat> um, the, I, I have had some where they've had sort of like some surface corrosion, and I just leave them in the ultrasonic for about half an hour and generally it comes off fairly well. I will often let the, um, whatever it is with the corrosion, sit in the, the, the ultrasonic cleaner with um, the warm water for a little while first to just soften things up, then switch the ultrasonic on and actually get rid of the, uh, um, uh, get rid of the corrosion. So some corrosion comes off you know, quite well, others not so much. It just sort of depends on how intense that corrosion is. A little bit further, there we go. There we go. All right. So I've got my great big, uh, I've got my great big soldering iron tip here, and I've lost my solder. It's under here somewhere. There it is. It's underneath the board. Of course it is. Of course it is. Of course it is. Of course it is. And then what we're going to do is I might actually clamp this, use a clamp to hold this together for when I solder it, so that we've got a nice. Yeah, that's poking through all the way. There we go. Okay. Do do do. Okay, so I have to make sure I get this little pin poking through super hot as well. I might clean off some of this old solder and just use new. A little bit of wick here. Okay, so I'm going to get that. Try and get that bit of metal there really hot. And so that I can get solder to stick to it. So 
let that cool. Cool away. And that is hopefully now, yep, that's nice and secure. Let's see if we've got any more. That one's not looking too crash hot either. So we're going to do this one as well. As I say, this is not likely to cause any sort of uh, issue with uh, with the board not working or anything like that. It's just it's 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 just part of its structural strength here. I'm gonna get it right. Get it right. Thomas Armstrong, hello. Thank you for joining. Happy first of July for the other day. Apparently, that's the thing to do. I don't know. Okay, so that's that one, let's ch check the rest. This one could probably do with some doing as well. Let's do the do. Mm. Mm. No, it's off camera, piffle. 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 Going through the same process here, and that is just take away the old solder and then use a new solder. I'm using my great big soldering iron tip here because I need to get a lot of heat because this little bit of metal poking through is actually attached to that to a large metal kind of rail. So I need to get, make sure I get it super hot in order for solder to stick to it. And so that's why I'm using this great big tip so I can get lots of heat where I want it. And we'll probably, how's this one looking? That one's not too bad actually, it looks pretty good. Uh, that one's all right as well. All right, so now we're just gonna go around and look at the other places where we might get soldering, solder cracking, um, often around the flyback transformer, which is this little ring of holes here, ring it in. Okay. I don't see any cracking going on there, so that's not ice. Uh, and then at the uh, little yoke connector here, that looked pretty good too. Oh, is that one? Sometimes it, oh yeah, that one looks a little bit cracked. You see the little ring around there? I'm not sure if you can see it, but that one definitely looks a little bit cracked. So we'll fix that one up. Okie dokie. God, these boards are cumbersome. Cumbersome. Oh, crikey. Right. So, use the uh, this little guy here to suck the solder out of this one. This is the one where you prime it. And I'll go like that. And then I can go suck up a bit of solder. Shouldn't do much. I don't want to do all four at the one time because... The connector will fall out, so I'll do two and then two. Um, and then we'll just get some more solder onto this here. There we go. Do the other two. One. Sorry, I'm not looking at the chat at the moment. I've got my focus firmly on this uh, soldering here, but I will have a look in a moment. Who's analog board? This one belongs to this one belongs to one of my customers, one of my regulars, who sends me lots and lots and lots and lots of stuff. Um, um, and. Uh, I have been busily recapping his stuff for ages because he sent me so much stuff in one go. Uh, he sent me a whole stack of classics and classic twos and oh, oh, who know it. Um, let's just have a look here. It's all looking good. And uh, 
Thankfully, I'm actually getting to the end of, uh, of his pile of stuff, so I will actually be able to send these back to him soon, which will be nice. He's also the one that sent me a whole bunch of uh, old Mac stuff. So I've not a bad idea to do the uh, joints around this um, this transformer here as well. There's a, I don't know if you can see it. There's a transformer here that I... I'm about to move this out of the way for a bit and just go to the top view. There's this transformer here. Right there. Right there. The transformer. Uh, it's not a bad idea to... Um, to uh, fix up the joints on this as well because I have seen problems with those so I might do that while I'm here I just like to uh, do the right thing <laughs> how easy I do this well thank you for saying that um, I have uh, I guess the advantage of a fair bit of practice with a lot of this stuff um, I'm not sure if I can be bothered using the uh, mechanical I think I might end up using the machine for these ones because yeah. <clears throat> I'm lazy, lazy. Got the machine here, may as well use it. Um, whoopsie. And of course, the other thing is that this, we haven't seen it work yet, so, you know, I could be, you know, doing all this stuff and going, oh, isn't that cool? And then I go to use it, it doesn't work. It's always possible. Just waiting for this to heat up. 370, waiting it to get up to over 400C. It's melting slowly. Once again, doing every second one because I do not want this to actually fall off. Oh dear, how are we doing here? I have a Quadra 840, it stopped working 20 years ago. I don't know where to start troubleshooting it. It may have caps broken off. Well, the Quadra 840 is one of the Macs that has leakage problems. Um, so you will need to recap it if it hasn't been recapped. But the other problem the 840 AV has is it has tiny weeny little traces on a blackboard. It's a nightmare to work on. I hate working on the 840AV. I hate it. Um, but it def they are a board that definitely needs recapping. Um, but, you know, if you want to lament um, the old uh, 840AV problems, you know, you speak to Steve from Mac 84. He has one that he has invested so many hours in trying to repair. Um and still hasn't it's become a bit of a running joke but uh, I'm confident he'll fix it one day I have one here at the moment with problems so someone sent me two and I managed to fix one of them but the other one oh it's got trace rot it's got terrible trace rot on the board and uh, and the traces are so tiny and trying to find where the broken ones are I mean, I was so sure I had it sorted, I found some busted traces, and I was like, oh, it's got to be these ones. Did all this fine trace repair work on it, and then it still didn't bloody work. So frustrating. Right, so I've just done that. What I've just done here uh, with that, just, just sort of uh, soldering those, it was just a little bit of kind of preventative maintenance, just because uh, I do know that there are sometimes problems associated with these. The transformer, the, you know, crack solder joints around there, or cold solder, so... I have just replaced that all with fresh solder. So I think we're pretty much ready to test this now. So this could actually be exciting because there is always a possibility that my 120 to 240 volt conversion didn't work properly. Or I've done something bad or whatever and things will go pow and blow up and not work and things. There's always that possibility. So uh, let's go to... Oh. So people can see my pretty face again and see my goggles. Um, Jay's back. Um, we've gone for a long time. How dare you. Um, 
Okay, now we're moving the last socket they all correct. Oh, yes, 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 terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Um, all right, okay. 0% chance it didn't work. <laughs> oh, God, I appreciate your confidence. Far out. Um, all right, what have I got here? I've got a classic right here. Right there. Hello, classic. Uh, so, we're going to pull out the analog board from this one, and then we're going to pop in this one, and we're going to test it. Oh. This is my classic. I own it. It's mine. It's no one else's. Um, and I have to take the analog board out to test, which I hate doing, but I'm going to have to. Now, this hasn't been switched on in a long time, so I don't need to worry about discharging it. And in theory, with a the Macintosh Classic, you should not need to discharge it. Because it does have uh, a, like a bleeder resistor in it that's supposed to discharge the CAT all by itself. But you know what? I always like to be careful. I like to um, discharge it myself so that I know it's definitely discharged. Um, but uh, in this instance, because it's been switched off for such a long time, there's no need for me to worry about that. If anyone is after a video on how to discharge a CRT on a compact Mac, I do have one on my channel. Uh, trying to save people from getting nasty zaps and things like that. Um, these ones are, there's just looking at the comment there about don't release the smoke. Yes, we, of course we do not want to release the smoke. But it's just interesting worth pointing out that um, this is not one of the Macs that has the old uh, paper film reefer caps. Uh, so just worth mentioning that a lot of the time when you get the smoke, you get smoke coming out of uh, old reefer caps blowing up. This is not a reefer cap model, so I shouldn't have any smoke, hopefully. 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 So, off it comes, there's the analog board. So this is, um, I'm just going to put the top view here for a sec. Um, this is a replacement speaker that I've, that I've sourced, and as you can see I've just got it held in with a little bit of hot glue. Uh, and it's a 50 ohm, and then I've put a little resistor in there, which you can't see very well, but I've put a little resistor in there to bring that up to the 63 ohms that it's meant to be in there. And it works really well, nice and loud, no real issue with it whatsoever. This is one of my really early recapping jobs, and I did a pretty lousy job with it, so just saying. Um, am I lying about these paper film caps? Maybe it does have paper film caps. It's just got the newer sort. No, it doesn't. All good. Um, right. Uh, da -da -da -da. How long does it usually take for a regular CRT to make the discharge? No idea. And it does, of course, vary based on the, on the size of it. But if we're talking about the little 9-inch screen here, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I generally leave it a couple of hours, but it's probably way less than that. I'm not really sure. Uh, you really only need to worry, worry about it uh, on the really early ones, because most of the later ones, they do discharge themselves. But, as I say, always like to be safe. Safe, safe, safe. In the wall that reduced 120 volt, or is this is this easier? So, the, the, yes, you can buy a converter. Um, you know, you can buy a, um, a you know a, a step down transformer. Uh, I should get rid of this. This has been sitting here for ages. Uh, you can get a step down transformer that'll take you from 240 volt down to 120. They're not cheap. Um, buying one of those out here is probably going to set you back about 100 100 bucks. Um, oops. Um, so that's one thing. I do have one, I, um, but yeah, there, there's, there's cost involved in buying those. And the other thing is that although this stream has been going for an hour and 20 minutes, in actual fact, the conversion took seconds. The main thing that I've been spending time here doing is recapping, and of course that has to be done anyway. So, um, so in terms of the conversion of this from, um, you know, sort of, uh, 110 or 120 volt to 240. We're talking about a very, very quick, easy process. Yeah. 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 Right. Are you in? Are you in? I'm just going to make sure that I've got my speaker plugged in because that's one of the ways we know. It's not speaker, it's a fan. 
I'm, what am I talking about? The speaker's hardwired. It's a switch. For, that's a little plug for a fan. Uh, that can be here. That can be here. This can be... I, I should screw this in, shouldn't I? Where did I put the screws? I think I put them in here. Yep, I hid them from myself. Because that's, that's what I do. Uh, okay. I'll just do one screw. Don't need another one. One's enough. Uh, this has got to go in here. Because we like to connect up the uh, grounding wires when we're dealing with CRTs, don't we, Jay? I always get a little bit nervous around these uh, those old CRTs. It's so easy to just break that little glass bit off the end and let the air out of the CRT. I mean, hear about it happening to people all the time. I have a spare CRT just up there. I keep it. I keep it in case I do accidentally crack crack open a customer's one or something like that. Um, Right. Okay. Right, that's in there. We've got that. So this hard drive is pretty sketchy on this thing. So I'll leave him unplugged for the moment. I've got my little extender cable here that allows me to uh, keep the logic board outside the computer when I'm testing. Let's just move that out of the way. Get ready for the excitement. Uh, all of this stuff that's exposed on the side here should be covered with this little um, safety cover thing, which I will put on later on, but for the purpose of testing, I'm not going to bother. So everything's flybacks connected, grounding wires connected, yoke is connected. Um, so yeah. Yeah, well, let the air in. Uh, it is correct. Yes, it is a vacuum. So it, uh, did I say let the air out? I didn't mean to say that. Um, right. Let's find. Oh man, I'm ready to sneeze. Let's find a uh, classic logic board. I'm bound to have one floating around here somewhere. There's an SE. Another SE. Oh, that looks... Oh, that's a classic two. I guess I'm going to use that. Uh, here's a classic. Two. There's another classic two. I guess we can test it with a classic two, can't we? I'll test it with my board in case it goes boom. Oh no, that's a... Yeah, that's a classic two. Sorry, nothing wrong with me. Right, so let's connect that up. We'll do some further testing if it works. Now, what I want to do here is I want to set myself up with at least a certain level of safety. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a uh, power cable from over here so that I can stand over there and switch it on at a distance in case it does blow up. I'm not right next to it. Now, I don't expect it to blow up, but I do like to be cautious. Better to be cautious, don't you reckon? I'm just going to find my power cable. Is this it? Yep, here's my power cable. Where's he go? He goes over to here. Sorry guys, just got to unplug it. Run it from across the other side of the room. Because, you know, anything could happen. And remember, if I suddenly lose picture, it's because I've blown a fuse, in which case I will uh, dash up and I'll reset the fuse and I'll come back on and live stream again. So don't leave if the screen goes black. All right, that's there. Just go far enough. Yes, this goes far enough. Put that there. Right. I'm going to switch this power on here and then I'm going to switch it on at the wall. Jeff Barnard, hello. Okay, so you've got a good view there for anything potentially blowing up on the board, so there's, uh, there's some excitement if you want. Um, but, oh, we've got to find out eventually, don't we? So, switch him on, go over here, stand with some distance. Hopefully you can still hear me because I've got my wireless mic on. If we're ready, we're gonna get count down here. Three, two, one. Okay, we didn't get a chime. But we do have a screen. So that's quite good. I'm not... Oh, 
I know why we didn't get a chime. There's no sound chip on that thing. <laughs> I chose I chose a logic board with no sound chip on it. <laughs> uh, let's grab one with the sound chip on it. We might get some sound. Ah, <laughs> uh, far out. Look at it. Sound chip. Ah, <laughs> oh, dear. I feel like a wally now. Great big volley, even bigger than usual. Um, okay. I've got so many classic boards, but they're just not here. Yeah, what about this one? Hey, no ROM chip. Um, what about this other classic too? Is there another one here? Yep. Whoa. No, that was a RAM sim. Okay. I know this one has sound problems as well, so I don't want to use that one. All right, guys, I'm going to hop up, grab myself a classic board, classic logic board from somewhere, and we'll test this out properly. So just sit tight for a few moments. I will be back soon. So, um, uh, Jay, are you still watching? Uh, I wanted to ask you a question about the sound when I did the back soon there. Was that a little quieter than before? Uh, Jay, you ha used to have complaints about how loud that back soon video used to be. And so I um, re-edited it with the volume a little lower. So, uh, just curious to know whether that meets with the House of Moth approval. I uh, want to make sure I keep as many people happy as possible. Okay, so I found a classic board here. This is one that I recapped for a customer. I have got RAM expansion floating around here somewhere. Where did I put it? There it is. So that we've got four megs, because we might want to we might want to test it further. This one does have a sound chip on it. Yep, there it is, I can see it. Only mono sound on these. So, it didn't blow up, so I'm feeling pretty confident. I don't feel like I need to take all those crazy precautions anymore, other than just the normal safety precautions of trying very hard not to electrocute myself. That is one of the aims that I set myself each day. Okay. Sorry about the uh, terrible view here. Okay, there we go. So, oh, shivers, regal. Um, okay, so, uh, does it have a ROM? Oh crap, I hope so. Yes, it does, it does have a ROM, yep. So this is one that, that was basically recapped, all sealed up, ready to go back to the customer, recapped. So I've just pulled it out to use it as a test machine because I don't have a, <laughs> I don't have a ROM on my classic at the moment because um, I uh, gave it to someone else, and I'm waiting for another ROM. Steve from Mac84 is probably going to send me one until I get to find out, you know, get it sorted out, doing it myself. All right, so let's try this again. Uh, Mark II. Um, this time I'm going to try it with the hard drive connected. 
this hard drive does make a few weird old noises from time to time. Being very careful not to touch anything with 240 volts of power because you don't want to do that. I have done it. I have zapped myself with 240 volts before and it's not something I recommend. All right, okay, we're ready, steady. Let's see if I can change the view here to uh, this one. I might even be able to lower that camera a bit so you can see the screen. Let's go. Beautiful. Got to hear a chimey chime chime. Hello, Pussycat. My cat's out. It's not meant to be out. We're going to have to do a little bit of geometry adjustment here. Uh, but that's easy enough to do. If I could just remember which one's which. Yeah. Oh, it's even booting. How cool is that? Do we just put the adjuster tools in there and just keep fiddling until we find the right one? I think one of these is focus. So. I'll have to do this properly later because I want to send it back with a yeah, this is focus. I've got these little adjustment tools here for making adjustments. I've almost definitely got System 7.1 on this. I generally not rec recommend going any higher than System 7.1 on an old uh, on an old classic. Um, they just don't run too well uh, with anything newer. I do see people using 7.5 on them, but wouldn't be my first choice. We're a bit off to the left on this one, or to the right, sorry. So I'm probably going to actually well. That's that's not an adjustment on the analog board, so I'm not going to do anything with that. No. Oops. Uh, in order to actually shift these left to right, um, actually on these ones, can you do it just in the monitors control panel? I know you could with later models, things like the G3s and that. Oh plug this in and have a look. So, well I think this is successful, it's been recapped, it's working, it just fired straight up. Um, we didn't get, um, you know, we didn't get any explosions or anything, so anyone who was here looking for an explosion, I, I just, my sympathies, I'm sorry. Don't always get explosions. Oh god, you thing you. There we are. So hard to adjust that. Okay, that's good. I think close enough. And what's this one? This one do I'm hoping there's one of these as an up and downy one. Yeah, that's an up and downy one. Look like at the end of the day, the guy that owns this, he knows how to make adjustments on this, so I don't feel like I need to make it perfect. That'll do. I'm happy. I mean I'm happy. Why wouldn't I be? Are the adjustment tools plastic screwdrivers? Yes, they are. Uh, you can find them on, um, I think on places like Amazon. If you do, I think they call them like TV adjustment tools or TV adjustment kit or something like that. Um, this is the crappy keyboard. Here's a good keyboard. Oh. <laughs> All right. I'm just going to balance this on my lap for the moment. I'm going to plug in the ADB. Yes, you absolutely should not plug in the ADB while the computer is on. Absolute no-no. So just pretend I did not do it. 
So you can adjust the brightness from here. Uh, this, on the older ones, there used to be a brightness control here, but this one you actually have a brightness control panel like this. Pretty good. Pretty good. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do that. Put it all the way up. And then I'm going to adjust this brightness to make it a little bit brighter. And then I'll bring it down with the uh, brightness control panel. This top one. Nope, this top one. There we go. I want it. I want to be able to make it really bright if they want to, and then just use the control panel here to bring it down. There we go. That's good. Okay. Now the other thing we're going to do with this, because it's a Macintosh Classic, I just always like to do it because I just think it's so cool. Something the Classic can do that a lot of the other Macs can't do. I think probably all of the other Macs can't do. I could be wrong. There might be others, but to my knowledge, the Classic is the only one that can do this. And that is, we're going to restart it. We're going to hold down Option Command XO. And what we do when we hold down Option Command XO is we boot into the ROM. So we haven't even booted with a hard drive this time. I've actually just booted into a little teeny weeny little partition inside the ROM. Uh, and let's see how teeny tiny it is. Yeah, 400k, thereabout, 350k, something like that. And I'll tell you what would have made it really, really convenient and useful would have been if they'd actually made it so that SCSI probe was, uh, was included on the system. It's not. Um, okay, so we can shut this guy down now um, because I'm content, as content as I'm going to be. But this one is working well. We'll take away that 240 volts of dangerous power. Um, but we now have a, an AC conversion. Now, as I said, this stream has been basically going for an hour and a half or an hour and 40 minutes. The AC conversion part of the process took about 20 seconds. It is the removal of one jumper. Or if you're going the other way around, it is the addition of one jumper. Um, but uh, I did recap it at the same time, and of course that's a fairly lengthy process. So I'm feeling pretty good about this. Um, I'm going to just discharge this because as I mentioned before, I do like to be safe. Where's my discharge tool? Here it is. This is my homemade discharge tool. Got myself a screwdriver here with a great big red wire, red for danger. And I connect that to some ground, and then I'm going to sneak this in underneath this little anode cap and give it a bit of a poke. Crackle, crackle, crackle. Nothing there. This is already discharged. So no danger, no high voltage. That can now come off. There we go. Right. And let's undo this. Hook up a multimeter to the tool. See what we get. Yeah, except that these multimeters are not meant to take really, really high voltage like that. It has a tendency to sometimes kill them. So on the off chance that there was some really high voltage there, I'd be worried about killing my uh, multimeter. <coughs> um, there's that. That comes off, that comes off, that comes off without a hard drive, but you could boot from the ROM and run software from a floppy. Yeah, it, look, it may well have, it's in the early days, I've, I've just got it in my head that uh, at a certain point, they stopped selling a floppy only version of, of the classic um, because it just reached a point where like, who was using computers without a, without a hard drive? You know, I mean, it's like, come on, it's the dark ages. Um, but I could be completely wrong. I mean, I do tend to, get things muddled up because I'm old. And, I, it, and the funny thing was that I, I kind of slipped in and out of the vintage Mac stuff. I, um, 
I was really into it and then I kind of phased out of it and then I kind of phased back into it again. So, um, you know, uh, I've got sort of large gaps in my knowledge when it comes to some of this vintage stuff. Um, I did own a classic, well, my parents owned a classic, and we then also bought a Warp 030 Accelerated to upgrade it to an 030 computer, which was pretty big for us back at the time, I can tell you. Um, and, uh, let's see. Yeah, I hate these things. Such a pain. Oopsie. Stop it, thing. Right. Now, is that, should that, that should probably be up under there. Yeah. So I'm putting my uh, analog board back in this so that I can use this as a testing machine. My analog board needs work, unfortunately. Um, but it is always the case when you have people that, are, that do repairs and stuff, they always leave their own computers till last. Something just fell down. I think it was just a power cable. Um, standard hard drive, none, 40 megabyte from every Mac. Yep, cool. Good to have people checking on these things and make sure that I'm not spilling out misinformation. I know the one that we got when, my, when we owned one in my family, it definitely had a hard drive in it. I don't think we would have considered getting at that time would have considered getting a computer without a hard drive at all. I actually had an Apple IIe with a hard drive back in the, the olden days, the olden days, my pre-Mac days. Uh, I had an Apple IIe, oh, well, my parents did, and then I went working, for, I worked for a company that did a lot of work with Apple IIe's, and through that company managed to get a really, really good deal on an external hard drive. The thing was massive. How big the drive was inside, I don't know. But the case itself was huge. It was like kind of this size, you know. And it was called the DigiCard. Never really been able to find any information on that particular device. But it was so good. I mean, we just had, it made such a difference to the usability of that Apple IIe. To just, and I, I was writing software at the time, so I wrote a little, a little startup menu thing so that when it fired up, you could, uh, um, you know, you could select uh, select what application you wanted to launch, things like Apple Works. Apple Works was probably the main thing we used on that computer. Um, and uh, yeah, and of course I was basic programming. That's where I really started learning basic programming. Um, okay, let's get that out of the way and let's work out what we're going to do next, if anything. Are we going to finish the live stream or are we going to move on to something else? Up to everyone, I guess. Um, I can uh, always find more things to uh, to recap if people are wanting to sit around and keep watching, or if people are tired and would like me to piss off, I can do that as well. Okay, oh, I'll tell you what I do need to do. I need to stick cover on this little guy. This guy. Feeling pretty good about this one. Ah, Steve just arrived. Hello, Steve. I was talking about you before. We're talking about how much you love working on Quadra 840 AVs. Um, <laughs> more I just got here. Fair enough. <laughs> okay, all right. If, if two of my Maciac colleagues have said I need to keep going, I better keep going. Um, I'll have to work out what I'm going to do next. I've got a uh, an LC2 which is giving me some grief, and I want to have a fiddle with that, try something. I've got that SE, uh, you know that SE that I started, the unfixable SE. I've got that one here, and I've got the parts now to try and fix it. Uh, they arrived the other day from uh, DigiKey. I think it was DigiKey. Um, so I can always have a crack at that. Uh, I think some of the parts might have even come from UT Source, actually. Uh, the only problem with that is I probably should make an announcement of part two of that video because I did do a part one and I sort of feel like, you know, I probably need to do part two. Now, you know, here's, here's what I need to do here now. I need to, let's see if this comes off with ISO. It does. And then I'm going to get myself a, a pen here and I'm going to go. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't view, I no view of that, sorry. I just used some isopropyl alcohol to remove the tick on 120 volt and then put in a tick at 240 volt. So I just did that. I did that with impunity. I did that with authority. I did it sort of like, like I'm some sort of special expert on the subject. So there you go. Um, my camera looks a little bit uh, dark here, so I'm just going to uh, brighten it up a little bit. Uh, right. Uh, no, yeah, this is not Joe's SE. I still don't have that yet. So one of the big complications we've had with that, that one is Madeline was planning, because so basically Madeline has Joe's SE 30 board. I should probably just get her to stick it in the post. She has that board and she has a few other things that she needs to bring me. She was planning to come over here a couple of weeks ago, I think, and drop that off or a week ago. But Sydney has gone into lockdown because of a new outbreak of COVID. So we are now uh, not allowed to have unnecessary travel and stuff like that. And so she has been unable to actually deliver that board to me. Now, she probably should just stick it in an envelope and post it to me. But as I say, I know she had other things she wanted to bring me as well. So she's probably just trying to save it all for one go. So, yes, unfortunately, Joe's is not here yet. Uh, so I can't work on that. But there was one where a guy had sent me uh, an SE30 board from Israel. Um, and it had had a battery explosion, which of course we don't like. We are not fans of battery explosions here. This is the board here. And I had to repair a whole bunch of traces around here because the battery exploded. So the battery normally lives there and that had died and caused some damage around here. So I had to repair some traces around there. Uh, I've recapped it, of course, and there were some, um, there were some uh, ripped off pads as well, so I repaired those. So it's all looking quite good, uh, but I could get it to, I could get it to chime, but I, it wouldn't start up. Uh, just get the SEMA CMAC pattern. So um, I noticed there was a fair bit of corrosion around these little, um, uh, what do you call them? Um, what's the word? Um, Mux chips which is an abbreviation of multiplexer. These, these little mucks I see here, I noticed a lot of corrosion around them. So I started lifting them off um, to clean them and, and the pins started falling off them. And the pins were rusted right through, so I couldn't re really repair them. So I've ordered new ones of these, which are here. And so I need to replace those. So that's one thing I could do. And these diodes, I ordered some new diodes for here as well. So, um, so, uh, <laughs> Mac 84, do you have a channel? He does indeed. If you uh, if you look for Mac 84, uh, you can put a link in there if you want, Steve. Um, there is uh, lots of good, fun, vintage content going on there. He's doing a, a similar thing to me, doing some of these repairs and stuff like that, and uh, as well as uh, showing off his. Uh, incredibly extensive vintage Mac collection that makes mine look like nothing. I mean, um, for me, I could rattle off all of the computers I have. For Steve, it's easier for him to rattle off what computers he doesn't have. So, um, yeah, anyhow. Um, so, okay, so here's what I can do. Uh, what uh, One of the things I do need to do, we'll probably come back to this, but one of the things I do need to do, really much need to do, is see if I can get an LC2 working. And I think I know what the problem might be. Uh, and if it is that problem, I can't actually fix it, but I can at least diagnose the problem. So this is, I can't, I better, oh, shivers. Um, all right, so I might have to go back up to the house, I'm afraid, to go and get some of these things. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just be a couple of minutes because I've actually got to take some boards out of computers. So uh, I will be back in just a couple of minutes. So please don't go anywhere. Uh, in the meantime, here is some soothing music. <laughs>
Hello, Fran. Alright, so what I have here is I have an LC2, a couple of them actually. So here's an LC2, this one's mine. Um, and this is a customer's. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to grab myself a little speaker here. It's like that. And I'm going to pop the speaker onto this one here, just like that. And grab this power supply. Oh. Pop this on here. And this is my LC2 and it is working. And this is what happens. What have I done? What, what, what? This speaker's not dead, is it? It's always possible. I wanted a speaker. I wanted a speaker. Excuse me, Mr. Speaker. That oh, seems to be working. Okay, so. That is the speaker, isn't it? Because one of them's a fan and one of them's a speaker. You're not helpful. You know that? Maybe this power supply is shot. Is there any more? Oh, there's plenty of other power supplies I can grab, so... Let's try another power supply. I'll be back in just a minute. It's alright, it won't take me long this time. <laughs> missing something obvious here please feel free to sing out I just grabbed that power supply from the shelf I, I don't even know it may not even work so but I was getting power to the uh, blue scuzzy here so see what happens now <laughs> what is going on with this one this one worked I'm sure of it I'm reasonably sure of it. I think it worked. I'm just going to see if it actually boots up. Blue Scuzzy's got light here. Yes, it's a little computer fart. Okay, it's booting. So, for whatever reason, I'm getting that weird sound. I'm sure there is a, a logical reason for it, but it is booting. So, that's all I really care about. 16 ohm. I can try a different speaker, can't I? I can try this dumb speaker. That's 16 ohm as well. What difference is that going to make? None. So, booting away here in my blue SCSI. Beep, 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 beep. This is the computer I use to test the blue scuzzies when I make them. Um, I'm going to wait till it finishes starting up, so I'm not switching it off mid startup. We can always have a look at what it looks like. So I've got myself a little screen here. Wee. 
chat. Switch it off. Can I switch it on? Yeah, <laughs> chime that time. Okay, so just for whatever reason, it uh, wanted to make a fart noise the first time, but now it's actually working. Uh, we've got our little cursor here. You can't see it because you can't see it, but it is there. And now we've got a little happy Mac. You can't see that either. There it is. There we go. If I do it, what if I did this? You can see it upside down. How do you like that? Well, it's got to be upside down because I'm in Australia. Don't you reckon? It is indeed a blue scuzzy, uh, Adam. Um, I uh, I make and sell them. What purpose serves the Arduino? Uh, that is, yeah, that is part of the uh, blue scuzzy. Um, what I would recommend is doing a search for blue scuzzy, B L U E S C S I, uh, and uh, or go to the website, which is S C S I dot blue. Um, and uh, you'll find information about them. They are basically a um, uh, a SCSI hard drive emulator. And so this little blue pill here has been programmed to pretend to be a SCSI hard drive. And as you can see, there's a little hard drive up there, up there, up there. Where? Well, there, there, there. Right. So I'm now, so I've done that. Right. So, okay. That was, it took me a really long time to do that. And I'm sorry. And everyone's upset now, and, and that. But anyhow, we did. We got there. We got there in the end. And what I'm now going to do is shut that down, and I'm going to show you what happens with this other Mac. So this is a working one. This is a good one. Everything's fine. Shut down. Okay, off we go. That one switched off. Now this one. I don't need to connect up a monitor. I don't need to connect up ADB. I just need my power supply. I don't need to, actually I do need a speaker. So let's get that. Let's put this to one side. Which side? Where the hell am I gonna put this? There's nowhere. How about that? Ah. So here's this one. This is the one that customer sent me. Uh, this has been recapped, although it may not look like it. It's been recapped with, um, what do you call these things? Uh, the, uh, um, Electrolytic caps by request. The customer actually wanted it to be uh, recapped with uh, surface mount electrolytics. They wanted to preserve the look of the device, which is fine. It's their totally their prerogative. And of course, they're you know good quality, long life ones, and all that sort of stuff. So now, when I switch this one on, it does work, sort of. I don't, I don't know what is going, oh, I think I need a, well, I need a, um, a battery for video, but I don't think I need a battery for booting, but we'll grab it anyway. I put it over here, didn't I? Ah, I'm going to grab a battery out of here. I normally have a spare down here, but I must have used it. $25 in the other half. Fully assembled fifty dollars. Yes, that's correct. I, as I say, I am actually an Australian, an official Australian reseller for the Blue Scuzzy. Uh, obviously, the price is different out here because it's Australia and the dollar's different and whatnot. But um, okay, connect you, connect you. Whatever is going on here. I'm not a fan. This computer does normally chime. It's making me look a fool. Jay's just posted a video of me. Why? Okay, I'm gonna connect up the blue scully 
to see whether uh, whether I'm getting power to it. So I was thinking of getting them 80 pin type and using a converter board. Yes, well, that's what things like the blue SCSI and the SCSI 2SD exist for. Um, replacing those original hard drives, unless, of course, you're someone who wants the noise. There are a few people out there that want the spinny noise. Okay, so it's just not chiming. Maybe this, this you know how it made that silly farting noise before? I really need to be able to hear this in order for me to test it. So... Um, It's, there's really no point in me doing this if I can't hear it because the problem this has is all sort of sound related. So uh, I'm going to pop up and grab a different speaker because that's the only other thing I can think of. I mean, I don't know. What is going on here? Why? Why? Hmm. Nothing ever works. Nothing ever works when you want it to. I'm going to take all these RAM sims out. I'm confused. so weird why why does it always happen on the live stream crackle all right well I think I'm gonna to have to abandon this because this is crazy this is crazy. If it's not behaving the way it's supposed to when I'm going to work on it, it is just going to drive me and potentially you guys bonkers. So let's not. Let's abandon this one and move on to something else. I appreciate your patience up until this point, but... Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. All right. So a couple of things I can do. I can have a look at that SE30 I was just talking about before. Uh, start replacing some of those components that have been killed. I suspect that's probably going to be the most interesting thing I can do. Alternatively, I've got uh, a couple of CDs that need recapping, but I think that's pretty darn boring as well. Uh, I think it's, I think the SE30 is going to be, have to be the way to go. This little guy here. Hey, this guy. <sighs> right, right. Check for five volts on drive connector. I it's yeah, I mean I know it's it's getting power, it's just not chiming. So anyhow. We'll move on. I'm not I'm 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 not gonna waste any more time with that because it's just gonna going to make me angry so uh, okay right so I'm going to replace this guy this guy is obviously off already and I'm going to replace this guy um, and then I'm going to put two new diodes on here as well um, this is some of the trace repairs and then I Probably, I, th I also need to kind of check and see, uh, there are a few places here where I have some real concerns about, oh, no, wrong view. There we go. I have a few concerns about uh, some of these trace repairs and some of these vias in particular, whether we've got problems going on with those vias. Well, I'll have to investigate those further. Um, but in the meantime, let us get started. And... We'll start getting a little bit of work done, and then I think we'll... Oops. RAM looks mismatched on there. Yeah, it is, sort of. They're, both, they're all one megabyte sims, but they're not all the same one megabyte sims, but they do work. I have tested these, this RAM in uh, 
another one. And it's not, it's essentially, it's not really rare that's giving us grief with this one. So, crank it up. Let's get rid of some of these uh, multiplexer chips. We're going to clean this all up. So this one up here completely fell apart. Yes, yeah, sorry about the uh, lack of scope view. I do forget sometimes. And I look up and I go, oh crap, you're not looking at what I'm looking at. And I feel like an absolute idiot. So an interesting thing about this, this particular computer is uh, this one has had battery explosion. And I have recapped it and everything. But in actual fact, there wasn't that much damage from capacitor leakage. All the damage has been battery damage. So... Uh, all right, so we've got those three chips off. These ones here, as we get further away from the battery damage, these ones haven't been as bad. These haven't been affected as bad. So I'm probably not going to replace those ones. Just going to replace these three. Going to get some uh, yummy flux on here, um, and which is going to help us get these pads all clean and then potentially find uh, problems, any busted traces or anything like that. Let's change onto a normal sized soldering iron tip. Is that, is that, is that? Where's my tip? There we are. Just a second. <laughs> So, we're going to clean these up. <laughs> right, okay, all right. Just checking to make sure they haven't missed anything interesting in the chat. Oh dear, oh dear. I think we might need a fume extractor. What do you think? Because this smoke was blowing right in my face. So I basically want to clean these up to a point where they look like new. And I can get solder happily on the whole pad. Now I have, do have to be careful with this because these are affected by the, uh, the leakage. And I don't want to uh, damage them anymore. Just give me a few moments, I will be back in just a sec. <laughs>
Sorry about that, guys. Okay. Oh, yes, yeah, so you weren't there for my test driving of the soldering pencil, weren't you? That was when I was working on the MacBook Air 13 inch. I thought you were there. Weren't you there? I thought you were there. Uh, and I have to say, I really liked it for that. I mean, now, I, it's, it's not something I'm going to use for this sort of work, because I need a big soldering iron, soldering iron tip for this. But basically, last, last weekend, I think, or one of the nights this week or something, I can't remember. I streamed at a really weird time, actually. I uh, tested out the new soldering pencil, micro soldering pencil thingy, and it's fantastic. Really liked it. So I had to do a little tracer repair on a 13 inch MacBook Air, uh, 2014 model it was. And I had to do a little repair on that and it was just brilliant having that, uh, that micro pencil. So, Thank you for the recommendation, uh, Jay. Thank you for nagging me into buying it. I can't see myself using it very often for this sort of work, but certainly when working on the uh, the modern ones. Okay. I think I said at one stage during that stream, I said, Jay, why didn't I buy one of these long ago? I said something along those lines. And I got the sort of response from you that I have come to expect. Can't remember what it was, but it was a very Jay response. Okay, let's clean up some of this flux and let's have a look, see what this area looks like. Time is at two o'clock. Definitely getting to tummy grumbling hungry time. Uh, where's my scalpel? I cleaned up. I cleaned up in here the other. Ah, there he is. Yes, I think you said because you never listened to me. That sounds right. That's a very, very J thing to say. I'm probably going to have to do a trace repair here. That doesn't look very good at all. But that's okay. That's a reasonably easy one to do. Um, and I might get the multimeter on some of these other ones. Jeez, these don't look too crash hot either, do they? Mm. I've just got to constantly be on the lookout for damaged traces because when you end up with uh, things being battery bombed, that happens. So let's get the old beepity beep machine. I don't know how well you're going to be able to hear it. So I will have to echo the sound of the beepity beep beep machine. Beep. Oh, actually, it was pretty loud, wasn't it? Beep. These all look pretty good. Um, so this one here. See, even that one's got continuity. What the hell, man? Alright, so all I'll have to do is stick the components on. I don't think uh, we've got any problem with uh, continuity there. Beep is audible though, I enjoy your continuity voiceover. <laughs> Beep. Beep. Uh, now, where did I put those components that I bought just recently? Uh, hmm. 
Oh. Nope, not there. I put them here. Lucky, second one I looked at. Lucky, lucky. Right, 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 right. Here's my diodes, just gonna need a couple of those. Two. Two diodes. Ah, 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 ah. And then I need three of these little guys. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. I see viewers starting to drop off. I'm clearly getting boring. I thank everyone for uh, sticking around for the time, uh, whatever time they have available, but I totally understand. I do get a bit boring sometimes. Sometimes, so it says. Now these little diodes here are not actually needed for the operation of the computer. They are related to the battery. I think they are designed to protect from the battery being put in with the wrong polarity. Um, so, but I still, I still want to be there. I mean, I'll, if I get this working, I'll still put a battery on at some stage. Let's see. Okie dokie. I'm rolling over a cable. I hate rolling over cables. I hate it. Let's get these new diodes in place. Oh, come on. Come on, man. Oh, far out. Sorry, I'm trying to get the packet open. Oh, shivers. Here we go. Couple of diodes. Microdiodular servo systems. There's one. And there's another. Another thing these diodes possibly do, and I could be wrong about this, they like possibly make it so that when the computer is on, uh, the real-time clock is powered by the computer and not by the battery. I suspect that might be one of the things they do as well. interesting to report. See the chat getting a little bit quiet there. People obviously just massively engrossed in what I'm doing here. But please feel free to chat away and talk about anything you want to talk about. I have missed some of the chat and for that I apologise. Now, is this, is this, is this right on this? F258 is what I want. Have I got the right components here? Find out in a minute. F258, yay! That way. That way. Well, it does appear like you're the only one talking for the last 10 minutes, so... Maybe it's because you haven't been here for the beginning of the stream, Jay, they're giving you the, uh, giving you an open floor. Uh,
The truth is, people have probably just started doing other things. They're like, oh, he finished that classic board. Oh my god, he's not stopping. Oh crap. So they've just left it on and they've walked away from the computer. Blue SCSI to my newly reassembled Mac SE. Excellent. Might make some, uh, couple, assemble a couple of blue SCSIs. I mentioned in my live stream the other day, one of the things that's been occupying my time lately has been, uh, I've been playing with a mirror drive door G4, and I'm hoping to get some time this afternoon. If I get some spare time, which I rarely get, if I get some spare time, I want to just have a play with it. Uh, it's all very well to go in and install operating systems and fix things and repair and all that, but the, the, the fact of the matter is, I just love playing with these things as well. I like loading up old software and games and just having a bit of a fiddle with them and a little bit of nostalgia. And so when, uh, uh, you know, sort of when... I get a computer all set up, I then wanted to spend a little bit of quality time playing with it. I've got to try and find my Carmageddon CD. I want to play Carmageddon on it. I know if it was Jay, we'd be straight into uh, uh, Unreal Tournament, UT99, but the fact is I'm terrible at UT, so it's not one of those games that I really like to play, but I do like to play Carmageddon and Carmageddon 2. And I play a lot of those um, Myst-style puzzle games on those old old computers. So uh, Twitter got started drive from eBay, and the box came yesterday, and there was a hair curler in it. <laughs> Oh, that's going up. That's going up. I love that. <laughs> oh, dear. <clears throat> Come on. All the solder. There we go. Let's get some nice fresh solder on there. I'm really going pretty heavy on the solder here because a lot of these pads look a little bit yeek. So I just want to make sure there's plenty of solder that's potentially going to help bridge any any gaps that might be there from uh, from the corrosion. So um, when it comes to those old Mist style puzzle games, I mean obviously I like Mist, but one of my favourites is one called Zork Nemesis. Um, it has no real link to the original Zork style games. Uh, yes, it's sort of a puzzle adventure game, but um, it's. Uh, I don't really know why it has the word Zork in it at all, but never mind. Um, but. Uh, I really enjoy that game. And another one was an adventure game called Time Lapse, a journey through space and time. Quite like that one. And another one I really liked was one called Secrets of the Luxor. Um, and what I liked about that is that was actually 3D modeled in the same 3D software that I used to use in the olden days. <sighs> <laughs> all right so i've put these new chips on um i definitely think it's worth seeing what this does now um so i shall go get my se30 case and we shall have a little looksy dooksy uh this is my rom sim now this is a big mess of wires rom it's not the original uh, the person who sent this to me didn't include a ROM with it, so I'm assuming they've got a ROM at home. Because if they don't have one, they're sat out a lot. So, there's our RAM, there's our ROM. Uh, 
everything has been recapped. We're all looking good here. Um, there's a bit of melty plastic here. This was not done by me. This was, um, it, it arrived here with a bit of melty melty. Um, quite a bit of melty melty. Uh, now, uh, almost definitely not going to work. Just letting everyone know. So I'll be back in just a second. I am going to go, oops, I'm going to knock things on the ground. And then I'm going to go and find where the SE30 case is. It's either here, nope, or here, nope, must be in here. This is me walking in here. I don't know if you can still hear me, but I'm a fair distance away from the uh, computer now. I'll make my way back here. Here's my SE30. This is my SE30. It's mine. No one else's. It's mine. Oh. Oof. 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 Oh. This one has a. Uh... Oh, excuse me. Oh God, I'm cold. My feet are cold. I'm cold. Okay, so this one has a version 4.2 SCSI 2SD in it. You can just see here. And this is one that I assembled myself. Um, we'll connect it up. Don't really need to do much here. I can test this out here. Just move my mouse. Let's put the board here. And as I say, almost definitely not going to work. Uh, we might get a chime. Because I have had that. I have had it chime. But we change to the front view here. Um, we'll almost definitely see a SEMA CMAC pattern on here, which indicates that there is a busted trace somewhere. Generally speaking, that's what it indicates. Okay, plug him in. And... Oh, I didn't connect the speaker up, so you're not going to hear a chime at all, eh? There's your SEMA CMAC pattern. Uh, but let's just see what it sounds like. I'm going to pl plug in a speaker because I do want to hear what it sounds like. And we'll go... Okay, that's RAM problems. So we get a very quiet chime to start off with and then we get the SAD Mac. Now interesting, the SAD Mac was something that came later. It didn't SAD Mac me originally. Um, which makes me worry about these chips that I've just replaced. I hope the, uh, they are good, uh, or potentially some other uh, trace damage around that area. So I'm gonna have to have a look. Um, I'm gonna take some of this RAM out. Come here, out, out, out. I said out. Cool. Hate these plastic bloody RAM things. So when you put RAM in these, you need to have uh, um, you have to have, there are two banks of four, and you have to have um, the same in each bank sort of thing. Well, I'm just going to try it with four megs of RAM. Okay, um, let's go and have a little bit more investigation. Right, this can sit over here. Crowd me even more. Heaven help me if I have to get out of here. I'm stuffed. Back to the microscope. Once again, I do not expect to get this one finished today. It would be a miracle, but you never know. Stranger things have happened. So, what I'm generally concerned about around here is that I do have continuity on all these things, so I'm going to need to get out the old beepity beep meat machine. And... Beep. Where's he go? Sorry, 
I just need to some of these ones that look nasty. Yep. Yeah. And all these things, there are so many of these things that look like they're busted and they're not. And it's confounding me. Did I replace these ones too? That one looks pretty crusty, doesn't it? Hey Justin, hello, thank you for joining. Watched a little bit of you playing Mist 2 the other day, but unfortunately got distracted. Uh, we ended up uh, jumping onto Discord, uh, the uh, Maciac gang after the show. We jumped onto Discord and chatted to some of our viewers and whatnot. So I had your Mist going in the background, but I couldn't actually listen to it. I'm gonna replace these three as well. I wanna clean up these pads. One of the things I'm going to have to do with this SE30, which I'm not looking forward to, I am going to have to just go to town with a multimeter, checking data paths and all that sort of stuff and all the boring things, all the boring things. Not looking forward to it. <laughs> have you tried the Rominator? Uh, yes, this, this is a, this is. I have a Rominator here. There's a Rominator. Bidi bidi. Um, I could try uh, a genuine ROM sim on this one, but <laughs> mine's my one. My, my ROM sim is held in place with a bit of hot glue because uh, one of the clips is gone so I'm not sure if I can be bothered breaking on the hot glue away to get that out so I've just been testing with a Rominator. So we're just going to try and clean these ones up again or these ones and then we'll put new chips down in there. I don't think there's anything wrong with these chips but just don't like the look of some of those pins. Oh I'm sucking fumes in again. I feel like the tip of my soldering line is starting to get a bit tired. I don't need to replace it soon. It's pretty tired. And if anyone is wondering if this board has been cleaned, yes it has. I mean it's dirty again now but it has been through the ultrasonic once. It 
Yeah, okay, so hang on, Bruce. I will send you in. Need ROM socket. Hang on. I send you a need ROM socket. What? 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 Using StreamYard or Ecamm today. I'm using Ecamm. I think I am an Ecamm convert. Uh, the StreamYard really does not do uh, multi cameras very well. And of course, I work with three cameras primarily here. And so I, uh, now of course I was using OBS, but OBS was very, very finicky, kind of buggy, kind of problematic, kind of not good, um, kind of free though. So anyhow, I decided to go with a paid option. And one of the main reasons why I actually wanted to go with a different one is so that I could do... this. I do like the audience interaction side of things. I do like to bring comments, people's comments up on screen. And I couldn't do that with OBS. So I, I started looking into options and StreamYard was great and it's what we're using for the Mac Yak show now and it's going really well. But it just didn't work so well for what I do here on my live streams. So I started looking at some other options and I saw this one Ecamm and it's it's quite good. It's quite good. But, uh, yeah. New RK okay, new. So this um this ROM socket that I'm actually using on this one is actually pretty good. The old one was terrible and damaged. I got this one, oh god, I don't even know where I got this one from. I think I took it off a dead board somewhere. Oh, yeah, I, was, I took it off a 2SI board. I had an old dead 2SI board. And it was, the, the, the ROM SIM is, uh, as socket is actually quite... I just realised, why the hell haven't I put a new one on mine? I'm sure I've got a spare here. What kind of an idiot am I? Don't answer that. Don't answer that. Please don't answer that. Yes, yes. But you know what they say. People never, repairers never repair their own stuff. So yes, thank you very much for the offer. I mean, I am actually going to buy some of these sockets and stuff. But I'm pretty sure I have a spare socket that I can use myself. And of course, I've got a 3D printer. I can print little clips for holding the ROM sim in anyway, which I have done. I've made them to give to other people. But I haven't used them myself. I'm just... Yeah, I'm just really proving to the world I'm a bit of an idiot today. Please don't anyone say what do you mean today. Okay, um, right, okay, all right, okay. So, time to put some new chips on here as well. A modicum of flux makes the world go round. Let's grab some more of these little chips. ICs, multiplexes. Sounds fancy, doesn't it? Multiplexer. See if we can get these around the right way this time. So I don't have to flip everyone upside down. Chips. No solder masking was done. This is true, um, but all, these are lifted up. So, uh, I mean, I've got. So, in terms of the long term, I have 
put solder on the copper. So the solder, the, the, the copper is protected. Uh, in terms of fears of potentially creating a, a, an accidental bridge or something like that, um, I'm fairly confident um, because the chip is actually lifted up. If it was a capacitor flat down on the surface, I would probably, uh, I would probably solder mask a fair bit. But for this, I think we're probably okay. I will probably mask a lot of this stuff off if and when I get it fixed. But, uh, you know, the lo longer I work on this, the, the more disillusioned, disillusioned I become. The worst thing about it is I made progress, you know. I've actually gone backwards from where I was. And that's where, when it gets frustrating. When you get to a point, you go, oh, yeah, I got this, yeah. So now I've, I've I had six problems before, but now I've only got five or four or three or whatever. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, no, I'm back up to six again. It's frustrating. Okay. Do those chips fail mostly from corrosion or do they also just fail during normal operation? These, I have never, ever heard of one of these chips failing. So, um, my removing and replacing them has more to do with wanting to clean up the pads underneath them. I could probably just put the original chips back on with one exception, with one that was so badly corroded that um, one of its pins was falling off. Uh, but yeah, I've never heard of one of these chips dying. Uh, it's not to say that they can't, but it would not be one of it would not be where I would go typically with a problem. I would not typically go straight to these chips or anything like that. I would be looking in other places first. Oops. Right. So just got to look around here. I'm just trying to find some potential bad traces. So I did remove the ROM socket to look underneath it and it was all okay under there. There was no damaged traces under there. Um, this is where the most of the trace damage was around this sort of a cyanotype. You can see a few repairs that I've done here and there. Um, and then eventually what I'm probably going to end up having to do is start doing um, meter readings along the board, uh, you know, sort of with a schematic and testing if we've got loss of continuity somewhere along the line. Um, that's what I don't want to do. It is just what I don't want to do. I'm just letting everyone know that I do not want to do that. Uh, just going to have a look at this board at a slight angle. Just looking at the side of the CPU chip here. can tell a lot from the side. Look at the gunge on that one. I 
I'm just with all of these things, I'm always just looking out for, re, you know, repeat problems, stuff that's happened on these boards with me before. I had one of these once where one of these little pins had actually cracked just around here, and uh, and I was able to repair it. Oh shivers! Look at that. Someone's got a little bit heavy handed with this. Has Dana been here with his pliers? So basically, I just went for a little wander. Um, I think that's still got continuity, but I'm going to check it. Yeah. But there was that really ugly bit that I just saw before. We can find it again. Yeah, this one. Look at this. Look at this chappy. Oh, I like it. <clears throat> Probably okay, but. That's still okay. Just didn't like the look of it. I definitely need to do more hunting around on this board. Now yeah, let's see if we've at least got rid of the sad Mac chime. Because as I say, that was a problem that I created. I wasn't getting a sad Mac chime. Isn't a classic analog board still, is it? No, it's not. Um, that was uh, over and done with, and I was, I should have probably just stopped then, quit while I was ahead, but to be honest, uh, I had some requests from others for me to keep going, because they were late to arrive, and uh, they wanted me to work on something else, so I've grabbed this uh, Macintosh SE30, which has been a fairly problematic board. Um, and I thought I would just do a little bit more work on it. So, as I said, at the beginning I was not really expecting to fix this. And it looks like my expectations have been met. But, you know, just working my way through, finding problems. Trying to fix them. The old thing. Um, so this, I did a video on this board before. This one was massacred fairly badly by someone. Um, <clears throat> and I'm doing my best to Bring it back to working order. Right. Oh, it's Jay off. Good night. Farewell, Jay. Enjoy your show, whatever it is you're going to be watching tonight. 
bit of X-Files or something like that maybe. Just want to have a look at the back of these. Sometimes there are problems on the back that I miss. Ooh, jeez, that's nasty. That's what I mean when I say massacred, as you can see, someone's uh, had a bit of fun here. Did you get the Mac 84 Cursed SE30 board yet? Unfortunately not. I was actually talking about this before. Um, it is in Australia. It is, uh, and is at a place uh, about a, oh, if I was to drive there, it would probably take me about eight hours to get there. Um, and it was supposed to be dropped off, but what happened is it was being dropped off as in in person um, with some other work that I was going to do. And unfortunately, Sydney, when it, Sydney got uh, some a new outbreak of COVID and went into lockdown. And as a result of that, this is some of, some of my attempt at repairs. Uh, as a result of that, um, I have been, I have not received the board yet. So, yeah, no cursed SE30 board yet, rather disappointingly. Um, having said that, I don't know, maybe the longer, you know, the longer it stays away, the better for my health, my mental health. Doesn't sound like it's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> but when I do get that board, I will be making a proper announcement. I will probably schedule a live stream well ahead so that people can plan for it and be ready for it and all that sort of stuff. One of the things that's been uh, most troublesome with this board is the fact that someone else worked on it before and damaged a lot of stuff. I suspect if I could have just got hold of this straight, you know, like battery damage, here it is, I think I would be well and truly fixed by now. Oh, let's test it. It's probably not going to work, but let's test it. I got my big goggles on, I can't say anything, so let's have a look. I've got some grit on the screen here. Streamlabs OBS for the first and StreamYard for the other because I was able to get it running uh, on a Raspberry Pi. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay, I will, I will swap the RAM. I will swap the RAM just to keep you happy. Um, just so that you know, ah, the RAM has kind of been in the same position the whole time um, before when I wasn't getting the, the yucky noise, the sad Mac chime. So that's the main reason why. It, have I got the right Mac? No. <laughs> Grab the classic. What a classic I want. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, SA30. That's what we want. I should probably go to this one. This one. Uh, so I'm going to just try this out now, and then I will, for the sake of um, of testing, I will put different RAM in here. Swap it around to keep folks happy. Let's connect the speaker. There we go. Okay, we've got that, we've got that, we've got that, we've got that. And let's see what we get. It's very quiet, the initial chime. It's just a little ding, and then it goes. Doo -doo -ding, doo -doo -doo -ding. There it is again. So this sad Mac chime that I'm getting now, 
this is a new thing. I wasn't getting it before, even with this RAM set up in the same spot. It happened when I started mucking around with these chips here. I was trying to clean up around this area here on the board. And when I started cleaning up, um, things went bad. Um, so, um, you know, I've obviously damaged something there um, and I haven't found what, I, what it is that I've damaged. And that's when I have to start getting into the really slow side of things and multimeter and schematic and testing one at a time. Now, of course, that makes for a pretty darn boring live stream. So I kind of haven't, this is a perfectly matched pair of a set of four here. So should be good. Um, four one megabyte sims. Get in there, you thing. Time's 240, because I'm going to have to eat. Just a reminder to anyone who's watching, if you haven't already, can you please smash, smash that, that like button. button? Would be appreciated, thank you. Um, if I wasn't getting this chime before, what was I getting? This is what I was getting. I was getting just a chime. So, bring just the, as in a normal startup chime. But then it wasn't starting. It was, we were getting the SEMA CMAC, the, the pattern. Then I started cleaning up around here and then and then I started getting the sad Mac chime and then I, I one of these chips was damaged so I had to just wait and order new ones I got the new parts the other day and now we're still getting the sad Mac chime so anyhow of course if the uh, the sad Mac chime goes away now that I've changed this ram around I'm going to look like the biggest wally out there How big a wally do I feel now? Pretty big wally. Okay, I've stopped getting the sad Mac chime with different RAM. Shh, shh, stop it. Shh, stop it, stop it. Okay, I wanted to see if this is going to boot, uh, even though I've got no video if it boots, just to see if it's actually uh, going to start up or something like that. So, on. So, we're getting power to the blue SCSI here. If I show this at the top, I can't show me. I just want to see if it actually starts up. I don't expect it to start up, but it'll be interesting to see whether we're talking about something which is only affecting video, or it's affecting other things as well. So... And obviously, if it starts, if I start seeing an activity light going on, then we know that it's something that is only impacting on video. But at least I know of sort of the RAM thing. Thank you very much, Toby Q. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> Didn't realise the recapping uh, website was like, yes, it is mine. So thank you very much for for um, for using it, for enjoying it, getting getting some you know, value from it. Um, it's great to hear. Um, right, well, I'm not getting any activity light here, so that leads me to believe that it's not actually working. What I can also do, I can do this. It's one of my little tricky things. I've got a tricky thing here. I'm going to disconnect this now. Actually, I'll switch it off. I'll disconnect this because I don't want this in the way. Ah. All right, I'll switch him on again. Oh, look, we've got another one. Can I put two on it at a time? No, I can't. Thank you. Pair character lifting some weight saying, keep it up. <laughs> Let's give him here a text description of a super sticker. How funny is that? Uh, rather than actually showing it to me. All right, so what I'm going to do, this is switched on. We're actually powered up. I am going to fire up some fancy R software here. Ooh, it's new, it's had an update. Oh God, it's about time.
God, I've got to go through all this stuff. Oh, goodness me. New update. Hot and cold spot. Oh, God. Can I just use the software? definitely a lot better than it was it's really it's improved sorry I'm just uh, sorry about the uh, the slow here there we go so oh, what are you doing to me you maybe the battery's flat that's always possible I'm gonna plug it into the power and see what happens Ugh. Ah, battery low, it was battery low, yeah, cool, okay. Right, so what I have here, I have uh, an infrared camera, uh, which, let me move this out of the way so that you can actually see it. And I am holding this here and detecting where we have heat. And we have heat. It sometimes tell us where we might find shorts. So we've got some heat coming on up here. We've got heat at the, at the CPU. So the CPU is definitely getting power. We know that. We've got some heat up here. The capacitor by the look of it. Uh, that's around the video circuitry there. Got some heat around there. And as I say, got some heat around this one here as well. You can't really see, sorry. This is my... Uh, but what, what you can sometimes do with these is you can... Um, you can detect sort of heat in some areas and then compare it to a working board and see where areas that are, that are maybe getting hotter than the other or not getting hot enough. Uh, but I can tell you now that the next thing I want to look at um, is around uh, uh, around this area I was looking at before, around this region here. Uh, I just it just looks a little bit iffy around there, so we're going to just have to go on a bit of a bit of a hunt, the microscope, and hope for the best move him back out of the way there. Sorry, I was just thought I'd show you those, um, uh, the, the footage coming out of my um, infrared camera and I wasn't able to show you anything. And so for that, I now apologize. So back to the scope. And we are looking out for anything that looks ugly. And of course this was recapped by someone else, which means we could, oh, look at that. Anyone else see that? Uh, another thing I'm often on the lookout for are solder balls. When someone else has done a recapping job that's not me, see if they've left solder balls flying around. No, that's not making a bridge. Sometimes you get little solder balls jammed in and they make a bridge, but that one was not. See, all of this stuff here doesn't look too bad. I, I wouldn't expect there to be problems around here. That's a VRAM chip there, and that's a VRAM chip there. And this is the little row of chips that you can often end up having problems with here, but uh, it's so clean. 
it's just really clean here doesn't appear to be any problems at all I mean I have replacements for all of these chips I can swap them out if I need to but compared to most SE30s I work on they're really good a little bit here maybe there's a dead trace under the caps here yeah. I mean when I when I recapped this um, I did I did you can you can actually see that I've done a bit of work where I've got this um, green uh, UV mask you know there were I, I did do quite a bit of work cleaning things oh that looks that looks interesting scalpel oops Try not to break it any more than it already is. So what I'm always looking for is these little dark spots on the traces. Uh, some of them can potentially be actual breaks. That one wasn't. So I have already gone in and done a little bit of trace repair work around here. Um, but the area that was giving me pause before was uh, close to the power connector, which I'm going to get to eventually. Because there could be problems underneath these chips as well. That's happened to, me, happened to me before. You know, you can have traces running along underneath these chips. And they can be damaged. Yes, I said CPU before and it was the FPU. Sorry about that. This is the CPU here. I was referring to the CPU before, and actually it was the FPU. 68882. What the... That's the diode that it took off before. I don't think he was actually causing any problem. But we will get rid of that solar ball anyway. So there's some ugliness around here. <laughs> Mac 84 tell me about your quadrant. I don't think he's around. Is, is, is Steve around here anymore? He's probably headed off. He's probably fallen asleep. That's one of my skills. It's one of my special skills. I can make people fall asleep. Just watch my stream. Fall asleep. You are getting very tired. And realistically, the most likely place um, with problems is going to be around near where the uh, battery explosion was. Uh, I just need to eliminate any other potential problems. The AV mocks me at every turn, yeah. Okay. Alright, 
let's get up here. Up here, up here. This is where we had all that ugliness before. Just don't like the look of this at all. I'm wondering if I should just take this chip off and clean around it a bit. So here we definitely got some proper uh, capacitor leakage corrosion around here. And I'm just wondering whether I might just whip this guy off and have a look under it. Uh, it's the SCSI chip, by the way. And we will uh, get some heat oiled so I don't melt any plastic. Where's my big one? There's a big one floating around here. I drove over it with a chair. Here it is. Okay. Uh, could the ROM SIM be bad? ROM socket bad? A uh, ROM socket has already been replaced, and the ROM SIM is a known good big mess of wires ROMinator 2. So I do appreciate the uh, the su suggestion, but the uh, we can pretty much rule out an issue with the ROM. Um, now, that's not to say that there isn't an issue with the traces coming from the ROM somewhere. I've looked under the ROM SIM and there was no trace damage there. But, you know, there could be trace damage somewhere else. Oh, this is nice and warm. Ooh, careful, I don't burn my face off, but it's nice and warm. Okay, that's one SCSI chip lifted from the board. Let's clean up these pads. And then we'll clean up the chip and then we'll put it back on. There is a big AMD chip there. It's this guy here. AMD. Don't ask me what it is because I don't know. It's a chip, it's a thing. Which does things, it controls things. <clears throat> it's a thing controller. Yeah, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with this chip here at all. I don't think there's anything wrong with those connections. I think that taking this off and cleaning it is a complete waste of time, but we're going to do it anyway. <laughs> Bruce's warm, buttery voice. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining me tonight. Uh, let's get some solder wick. Wickety whack. Clean this off. Uh, hopefully at the end of this we'll have some tiny little pads all ready for a chip to go on. And I think probably fairly soon Regardless of the outcome of this, I will probably step away and shut down the stream because I am 
hungry. Very, very hungry. I didn't melt that. It wasn't me, I didn't melt that. Someone else melted that. Can't blame me. I don't have any Apple IIe's. I'd like one. I don't really have anywhere to put one. I don't have any. I have uh, an Apple IIc. Two of them, actually. One that works and one that doesn't. Um, and I have a IIc monitor as well, but it's not here. It's in a different state. I just haven't picked it up yet. My sister is minding it for me. Does that solder it cost a lot and get used up quickly? Can you reuse it? No, you can't reuse it. Does it get used up uh, quickly? Yes, it does. Is it expensive? Not particularly. I can't remember what I pay for it, to be honest, but I go through so much of this stuff. Um, I can just buy it at a, a, a local electronics shop. I can actually walk to. I walk there sometimes for exercise. And if I have nothing else to do, I'll grab some wick while I'm there. As I do go through so much of it. Uh, but yes, definitely can't use it, want, reuse it once it's been saturated with uh, solder. You can't get that solder back out again. And then once it's saturated with solder, it won't suck up new solder anymore. So it is definitely a one use stuff. Um, and it's just a. Uh, it's just a cost that I have to bear with this sort of stuff. Um, can't be helped. Very, very important to do. Okay, so I'm just going to try and clean up this chip a little bit as well. And I'm going to do that by getting a big glob of solder on the end of my iron. And like this. And then I'm going to Excuse me, hold this down and just sort of do this. Are you enjoying that noise? Squeakity squeak noise. How's your flux supply doing? It's pretty good at the moment. Um, I've got a, I recently started this one here, which is a, what's this, a 30cc, and I've got three more 10cc ones there, but I think I've lost the plunger. They don't come with the plunger. Well, they might have come with one plunger uh, for, the, for the, a lot of them. Um, so I've got to go and find a 10cc plunger from somewhere. So now one of the biggest concerns I have with this board that I'm working on at the moment, this SA30, was that some of the vias the vias is a little copper tube that links layers together. Some of the vias, when I got this, were really badly mangled. Um, and the concern I have is that in that manglage, has, have they accidentally created a short inside the board, board, maybe between layers or something like that? So that's a concern that I have. So that's where I'm going to need to probably take a few readings um, with a multimeter of this and then compare it to my working board and see if there are some possible shorts somewhere. Uh, this is a PLCC plastic leaded 
um, chip carrier. This here, which is the type of chip that you can solder directly onto the board like I'm doing now, or it can sit in a socket. Uh, the way these work here, you've got a little indentation. That indentation is pointing towards pin one. And you can see actually here, there is a little white dot screen printed on the board, which is also indicating pin one. Uh, but they also have this little notch on one side and that lines up with a little screen printed notch on this. So it's pretty hard to get these the wrong way when you've got two little indicators showing which way around they're supposed to be. And they start at pin one and then they move around in a clockwise direction. So pin one, pin two, pin three, pin, oh, you, can, you can't see that. Pin one, pin two, pin three, pin four, pin five, pin six, all the way around like that. So that's just a little tip for anyone here that doesn't know about these PLCC chips. Uh, I need to try and get this on. When I am putting one of these on, um, I usually try and just do one, try and get it in place as best as I can. And then I just solder one pin, like this one, like that, these on. And then I'll come at it from another angle and solder one pin from the other side. Of that there. So he just tacked on now um, so I can then start soldering the rest. Oopsie, I'm going to do this side, this side here. No, I'm going to do this side, this side, this side here. Can you 3D print a plunger? That's a bloody good idea. I think I might do that. I keep figuring that I maybe the plunger I have is around somewhere, but I'm just worried that I might have thrown it away with my last 10cc tube that I used, just not thinking and just threw it out and threw the plunger out with it. I go, well, that's long gone now. Because I went from a 10cc to a 30cc. And so it's a long time ago since I was actually using it. I am going to look around, see if I can 3D print a plunger. Doing a nice little bit of drag soldering here. People who know me know I'm a bit of a fan of drag soldering. Got to make sure you don't make any bridges or anything like that. <sighs> right. Now, just going to look at this from an angle to make sure that I, all my soldering is all neat and tight. Looks good. Looks good. Wrong one. Looks good. Looks good. Okay. I expect absolutely no change. I didn't see enough there for it to, to concern me. Look at the wobble on that fella. Just doing more hunting. Hunting for damage. Uh, down here is where these mangled... Oh, far out. That's not good. Bent that. I might try and solder that down a little bit better. Uh, 
uh, you'll be pleased to know that hasn't actually been like that the whole time. I think that is something that I have just done while I've been doing this last little bit of work because I have actually been spending quite a lot of time down here and if I'd have noticed that uh, or, sorry, if that had been like that before it definitely would have been noticed. That looks better, crisis averted. Yeah, so down here is where we had these uh, these really badly mangled vias, like this one here has just been really badly mangled. And of course their worry is that there's, the, you know, in that mangling there might have been a, um, a uh, you know, a, a, a short cause somewhere. Um, that's a badly mangled one, this is a badly mangled one. Um, you know, so. I, I'm going to have to go around and do some testing around those vias. Um, and of course the other thing is that there were so many, so many busted traces around this area. I've repaired I think four of them. And you know, maybe there's more here that I just haven't seen yet. Just got to keep that eagle eye out. The, I haven't changed the Euro of chips, but see, the, the, the thing about that Euro of chips is that they are really, really clean. Normally on these things, the Euro of chips is an absolute mess. But on this one, they are absolutely bloody spotless. So it just doesn't, it just doesn't sort of fit that they would be causing the problem. I just feel like it's more likely the problem is down here where we had all the battery leakage. So have to do a replace there, or a trace repair, well, I mean there's a little dark spot there, no, oh, here's okay. Had to do one there, had to do one there, 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 there. Alright, well. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to uh, fire it up, test it one more time. Not expecting it to work, but we'll fire it up one more time. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start getting it with a multimeter. But I won't do that in that live stream. I will wrap this up so that I can go and get something to eat. Uh, so let's just change to this, uh, this one. Still getting used to where all these views are. Uh, uh, the, yeah, the, the Euro, uh, they're the original chips, but they're just very tiny. Oh, wow. Okay. Did mm. We got that there, that there, we got that there, bit of speaker, pop that there, pop that there, that there, and we'll just give it one more crack, just for fun, and then I think I'll uh, finish it off and do more crappy work with it later on. We ready? Oopsie, I've pressed something here I shouldn't have. There we go. Three, two, one. Yeah, still got CMC Mac here. And to be honest, I didn't even hear it chime this time. Oh no, it chimed, just very quietly. Chiming a bit quietly. So I've still got work to do. Um, as I say, I'm going to be focusing around the um, um, around 
the uh, this area where all the battery damage was, going to be looking at some of these really badly damaged uh, vias and see whether there are problems going on there. Um, power not going where it's supposed to go, that sort of thing. There is, I believe that since the SE30 has gone through this, um, uh, you know, kind of reboot thing, you know, where someone is actually making SE30 boards from scratch now, um, I think that there is actually a digitized version of this board, like a board view now, which could make my life a lot easier. So I might go on a hunt for that, see if I can find it. Um, so s once again, sorry guys that uh, this last one has been a little bit on the un kind of unsatisfying side, but I kind of knew that was what was going to happen. I don't know what went on with my LC2s before that they were misbehaving, but you know, that's a... Uh, they're, they're computers. I mean, computers will be, will be computers. Um, and sorry, I just realised this thing here got knocked down, and I can't see it. There we go. Um, so anyhow, thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you to the people who super chatted for the super chats. I much appreciate it. Um, and uh, and I will sign off now. And uh, just for anyone who hasn't done it, please don't forget to smash, smash that, that like button. button. Um, and I will be streaming again probably next weekend, I would say. For all of those in America, uh, happy 4th of July for tomorrow. I mean, it's already 4th of July here, but for, for tomorrow, happy 4th for you guys. Hope it all, uh, it all goes uh, well for you and you let off lots of firecrackers and whatnot. And I will uh, see you hopefully at the next one. So thank you for joining and bye now. Yeah.